to participate in a Don and Mike show contest? How about this? You or a member of your household can only win once for 60 days. You must comply with any age limitations for each contest. For complete contest rules, send a self address stamp envelope to the mighty WJFK, P.O. Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thank you, and God bless. Everybody loves Don and Mike. Oh, Beth Ann. Oh, Mike, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting the in I, configuration. I, I didn't there. do my, my signal to you. Either. The, 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 yeah, you normally give me like a point list. You looked at me as soon as you... Um, yes, he wants you. Yes. Yeah, Beth Ann, you know, I had a thought about that. I would be willing to take the shirt off. Baby. Okay. Yeah, let's make it a little... Yeah, you know, that is a smart move. I mean, I think... When do you think you're going to be ready to sew the button on? Well, I've got uh, my assistant going down to a uh, grocery store to get a little sewing kit. Because I believe that uh, following in the footsteps of Mike, I may do a break sans shirt, simply wearing uh, my tuxedo pants and the necktie. A very macho. Uh, uh, Chippendale's looking. I would, I would, I would urge you to alert the uh, female staff yeah. as you did with me. Yeah, oh, I will, Mike. You know, and, uh, Trust me. It should be fun. Because, because what I'm discovering is... Even even with all the weight that I've lost, and I'm very happy about that. I'm not trying to rub sand in anybody's face. Right. You know, listen, I, I used to weigh about 270. I weigh 212 now. Right. Two, 212 still like a pretty number. <laughs> and to see my fat body right crammed into tuxedo stuff with no shirt on. Yes. Well, that's got to be. And How are the pants like... fitting? Are the pants okay? Pants are fine. Pants are fine. The pants are fine. The problem is the top button, the button right here, it's not that the neck's too big. No, because the neck looked good when you tried it mm -hmm. on. It was one of those deals where it just fried off. It was ready to fall off. That's crucial. The you got to have that button. So i got to have that button sewed back on so I can continue doing the show in a tuxedo today. And, of course, you're in your tuxedo to have your uh, your, your hobnobbing with uh, with NFL royalty this evening. No, that's were. wrong. I always wear a tuxedo on, <laughs> on oh, yeah. Friday. We ought to wear tuxedos every Friday. Yeah. So, anyway, I had a button come off, and I went to Beth Ann, and... and um, that's part of my duties. That's right. So please, very uh, exciting. So the, so the button on my shirt, washing. Please, thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you very much. She's got so many different roles on. See this if set. you can yeah. apply the, the same amount of finesse that you did to getting Mike that chair so fast. Yeah, and and getting my daughter's backstage at the uh, Hillary Duff concert. Wow. Which which Beth did so Beth Ann did such a good job of. And, and they were so excited. And don't forget, we'd like the biggest guests on the show. So I'm looking at the newspaper today. Let me just throw out some names because okay. you're so great. She is really great, as you mentioned, like getting your daughter those tickets. And yeah. That, I mean, that Sharon, I want her to sew the button on my she's shirt. She's just a can-do producer. That's she right. is. So um, how about uh, John Carey, I believe, is the fellow's name. Um, <laughs> yeah. Lance. <laughs> That's an Lance, easy poll. Lance R R R Armstrong. Arm, Armstrong. Oh, he's right. good. Um, well, now I know who this is. This is George Bush. Yeah, he's he's in town most of the time. Uh that Mer might be tough. Meryl Streep. Yes, Meryl Streep. Oh, and Tom Brady. So how about that? Can you, that's the front page of the newspaper. Can, work on that after you get done. You but, must tally Barry. But, oh, yeah, she's, she's, in, she's in the box. Yes, but Catwoman. But don't forget, to, don't forget to, to do my button first, please. Yeah. Uh, Priorities. Oh, listen, listen, hold on a second. Is this thing turned on, Rob? Yeah. It's ready? I think, I think, I think we're going to have to reload some of the machines. You know what? What we loved doing yesterday. Yes. Hello. I need. Hold, it. hold on. Mike, you got a mic. Hello. On there for Mike. Hello. There we are. Hi. This is Yallen Line One. <laughs> it's Yallen. It's Yallen FM. More commercials, more often. <laughs> now remember that this is a new trend in radio. There are stations called Bob FM and Dave FM and Alice. But on Yellen FM, occasionally, we'll break for just a little bit of talk. But mostly, it's all commercials, all of the time. Hi. This is Alan Line One. Yellen, Yellen Line, Line One. One. There you go. I'm the program director and the general manager of Yellen FM. <laughs> My family, friends, and other radio associates have said to me, Yellen, you know what we'd like? The same thing you would. A radio station that plays all commercials all the time. 
Isn't that right, Yellen? It's right, Yellen. I was talking to my superiors and saying to them, why break the income stream? It should be revenue, revenue, revenue. We're only playing 18, 19, or 20 minutes of commercials an hour. That, 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 that does not fly on Yellen FM. So on the new Yellen FM, you can count on more commercials more often. A total of 55 minutes of live commercials and recorded commercials per hour. <laughs> and as always, we start every hour with your most requested commercial on Yallin FM. What's the most important commercial today? It's... Tonight at 8 on E! Meg Ryan on the big screen. She was America's sweetheart. E! Entertainment on Yallin FM. You asked for it, you got it. On Yallin FM. Poor choices in the guys they end up with. A stalker. And now... up in a lot of creepy places. By popular request... Your moves. On Yallin FM, here's a brand new commercial you'll love. Sticks. See, it appears they were playing music on Yallin FM, but it's a commercial. It's a commercial for a concert. We asked our listeners here at Yallin FM what they wanted, and they said... More Neil Clark Warren. Being able to wake up every morning with Allison is kind of like having a sleepover with your best friend. I love my husband. We have so much. Where love. is he? We do everything together. Gallon. Having the companionship of a best friend. The passion of true love. Hi. Shared view of the most important. Gallon FM. All in one person. That kind of relationship would be something. That's special. Dr. Neil Clark Warren. I'm Gallon FM. We've thrown out the pesky music and the pesky talk and given you what you're craving. The come. Commercials like the radio stations that you remember when you were a kid that played the hits over and over again. We've tabulated the phones at Gallon FM. And again, the most requested commercial of this segment is Tonight at 8 on E. Meg Ryan on the big screen. She was the Meg Ryan commercial on E Entertainment, Yallin FM. Don't forget the 10th caller this hour gets to play Find the Penny. Yeah, the guys they hand up. We asked what you wanted. From Yallin FM. More commercials, more of the time. And you said, what about classic commercials? Yallin FM! That was a good one. And don't forget all weekend, we'll be doing a countdown of the greatest commercials of all time. But of course, we'll be getting paid by the sponsors for that. And the secret revenue game. Wait to be a winner in the slush fund. <laughs> Yelling at them! Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. Real Men of Genius. The Real Men of Genius are the people at Anheuser-Busch who Mr. bought commercials on this radio station. <laughs> Yelling at them. I'm Yelling Ryan Wine, and he's Yelling Ryan Wine. And don't forget this weekend, lots of infomercials with commercials. <laughs> hey, Yelling. Yes, Yelling. What's your favorite place to eat, Yelling? <laughs> I know what it is. Tell me, Yelling. I'm Yelling at them. It's... Applebee's! You ever have one of those days, you know, where it starts off... Dad, look, I got my first tattoo! Followed by... Your recliner? <laughs> I don't need it. And we're ready for the countdown of the number one commercial of the hour on Yallin FM. Let's play it, Yallin. I know what you think it is. And you're right! Tonight at 8 on E! Meg Ryan on the big screen. She was America's sweetheart. Everybody had a little crush on More commercials more often on Yallin FM. <laughs> Where's that Bud Light commercial? Play that again. On Yallin FM, you asked for it, and you got it. Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. That's for you, Yallin. Real Men of Genius. And that doesn't leave much time for music, does it? Here on Yallin FM. Oh, I love our commercials. Okay. Uh, that's a tribute to our general manager, Alan Lyman. If he, if he could, he would have... It, it would be like that all the time. <laughs> hey, how about this reverb all the time? <laughs> and uh, If he like, could. <laughs> why don't we, as tribute to Alan, just do, for today, do the groaners like we work on Yallin FM. Very good. Oh, good. Because we've got how many are there? One, two, three, four, at least four or five of them. They're all great. They're, They're all great? great. Okay. <laughs> 
Hey, it's Yellen FM. I'm Yellen Line One. I'm Yellen Line One. You've got some groaners today? I do, and you know what I love about them. What's that? They're free. <laughs> I'm Yellen FM. Wonderful. What popular drama features investigators who solve crimes by smoking massive amounts of marijuana? What? CS. Hi. <sighs> It's Yellen FM. And speaking of I high, don't groan. I don't know how to groan. Speaking <laughs> of high, I want to say not H I, but H E double L O to Goldie and Kim. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be playing more commercials later. <laughs> what 70s rock group loves cookies with a creamy center? What group? Oreo Speedwagon. Fantastic. I won't groan. <laughs> Allen FM. I'll just give you one more. Thank you. What's the name of the movie where Will Smith's nemesis goes both ways? Which one? By robot. <laughs> Here on Allen FM. Was that the last one? That was. Hey, now. <laughs> Turn it off now. Okay, yeah. Okay, kind of back to the... You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. You are right about that. Hold on, Nick. Rob, Julie has lost somewhere in here. She's lost in the control here. Oh, there she is. There she is. There she is. Oh. I got her. Bye, Julia. Based on a true story, he was an young Nazi with one true enemy, himself. A man of faith, a man of hate, and a soul torn apart. Viewer discretion advised. Uh, oh, hi, Rob. Hi, and good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Fry B. And all the ships to see. Broadcasting in beautiful evening wear. Provided by Dicker and Dicker of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Don Geronimo. Mike O'Mara. Yeah. All right, thank you, man. Yeah. I thank you for listening to the Don and Mike Show. New episode on this Friday. Oh, 07-2304. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Mm, yeah, thank you, Buzz. And hi, everybody. Thank you for listening. Don and Mike Show. New episode. It's the 23rd of July, 2004. July. Call us from anywhere in America at 877 365 3636 from Canada. You must call 800-636-1067 in Washington, D.C., 202-432-1067 on WJFK-FM. Wonderful. So here we are, ready to do the show, right. and uh, I'm wearing a tuxedo, Hi. which is nuts. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to see you in that outfit. Uh, you're kind of going uh, against all of us. We're kind of in our casuals today. Well, as, as I always am. You know, every, for me, every day is casual Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, but now look at this fancy invitation. I just want to show you the, the fancy invitation we received at home. That's lovely. You know, nice. And I'm, I'm going to show off here, but what the hell. Uh, you know, it's got a nice... Uh, Cupid and it's it's got a big heart on it and, and then uh, it's the got a heart word, it yeah. has a heart on I'm it. Sorry, that's Cupid, my, that's no. strictly me. And I, Buzz, that's maybe the oldest dirty joke that I, I ever I used know. on the radio. The uh, password <laughs> is Fidelio. <laughs> <laughs> Mister and Mrs. Wide Shot. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mister and Mrs. Arthur <laughs> B. Modell. Request the pleasure of your company. Mm -hmm. May I see? Sure you may. Go ahead. Take a look, Mike. That's right. It's me, dumbass disc jockey, <laughs> going to a thing tonight where I'm wearing a monkey suit. It's very nice, though. The guy that used to own the Ravens. Mm -hmm. Still not really sure why I'm going. Good people they're, to know. They're nice people. Good people. They were fantastic to me last year. Mm -hmm. I bored you to death with the stories of, of the Modell family allowing uh, me to uh, fly to Miami with the team. Uh, right. Uh, go on the sidelines for the playoff game. Go Went to the Chris, to the cream, team Christmas party, for God's sake. They've been very generous. And, and after all of my talk about how I would remain close friends with uh, David Modell and wanted to stay in touch with it, the yeah. truth is... How you done? The truth is I've not... I've not had one bit of contact with him. Well, tonight, hopefully, since his marriage. Know, although it seems like it's a rather large gathering, it's going to be a rather significant. It's not going to be intimate. Black tie events are usually right. many, many folks. Do you, do you think it's like when a ten-year-old has a birthday party and when mom takes care of the guest list and she invites people that aren't really his friends but she thinks are his friends? No. What a horrible thing to say, Rob. Well, no, I don't mean that in a bad way, but you said that, you, 
What about Ben Contact? Disc jockey? He likes that disc jockey, doesn't he? Yeah, I, you know, I'm sure that's what it was. <laughs> you know, you, you go through the list and you go, okay, we've got a bunch of people who work in the football arena. Got a bunch of people who work in corporate America. But Hold David on. Modell will be thrilled to see you. Yes, and I'll be and I'll be thrilled to see him and his and his wife. And uh, anyway, it's a, it's a very fancy thing. And it's uh, tonight in Baltimore, which is why I'm wearing a tuxedo now. And what happened was right before the show, the button which fit fine, the, the top button on the shirt popped yes. because it was crusty, like mm -hmm. the, when they come back from the dry cleaners. Mm -hmm. So I asked Beth Ann. Because she could do everything if she could sew the button on. No, you asked her to, to do more than that. You asked her to sew it on you while you were wearing the shirt. Well, like... Which, which is quite a task. You can't blame a guy for trying. I mean, I don't think that's a doable task. Like, I, okay, I will confess to that. that, that for, okay, this is, this is a lot of payback for all of the Golden Boy talk. Right. And right. I accept it because this is what I said to the best I had today. <laughs> Sitting in the... In the office. I mean, I mean, I understand that the sewing of the button is one thing. Yeah. The sewing it on you while you are standing there, that it's an amazing amount of pressure. I said to Beth Ann, I would feel more comfortable not taking the shirt off yeah, during the of show. I'm all strapped in. I've got the, <laughs> That's the issue. I've got, the, you... I've got the cufflinks on. I've got all the buttons done. I've got right. the, the, the goddamn uh, cummerbund on. And you got to take everything off to be able to do this. So I right. said to her, how about during a break? It's nine minutes. Just come in and I'll stand here. I'll stand still. And you just you just sew the button right there, right on the very collar, right on the tip of the collar. The little tiny button on the top of this red shirt. Right, dirt. right. But if there are needles near your jugular and, uh, I know you know. There are. I thought she could handle it. You know, it, it's okay. But that you decided that you would take the shirt off and let yeah, her do that. absolutely. And then you will alert the staff that the shirt is off. I will, Mike. I, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, this is all about the entertainment. I will, I'm glad to. Or she could do it while your shirt is on during the break. What? Like while we're on the air, you know, she, instead of during the break, she could do it while we're on the whenever air. Whenever she's ready, yeah. whenever the multitasking Beth Ann is ready. When was the last time you went to a black tie event? The last time would be a, a, Jesus Christ. We used to wear them all the time. Yeah, that back, is a long time. Back we find we, excuses to wear them. Back when we would be in the circles where we would get invited to stuff like that. I Isn't it know. supposed to work that the older you get, the more you get invited to these things? Yeah, I think but we so. don't. But we don't. We don't get invited to anything. It's got to be at least... Ten years. I, I mean, no. I take it back. Uh, no, uh, for uh, at a wedding. Okay. At the Broyles' wedding last last the last year. You wore a tux. Yeah, I wore a tux, but not a lot before that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe at your last wedding would be <laughs> would be the last time or at Rob's wedding. Or uh, I can't remember when I wore a tuxedo. I don't know. Anyway, it's uh, it's a weird way to do a show. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't feel like I'm doing our show because I'm you right. Know, got the shiny shoes on and got the yes. You know the the. You look good though. I mean, that's yeah. good for a rental tux. It's pretty good, and I didn't even and I didn't even go in and give the measurements. No, you mean the jacket wow. fit great, the pants fit great. Just said this is my size. Give it to me, baby. And even the shirt is a rental, and that's probably why the buttons are so crispy. Anyway, uh, Beth Ann, if you could get on that now, it's top of mind with me. Now I'm like Mike was with his with his chair. I understand. God, somebody please shoot me. I was so mad at Mike the other day. Not really, you know, show mad, not real mad. Mm -hmm. But I was show mad at Mike that Mike would not stop focusing on the chair. And now... The chair, and I was like a little spoiled child. And now, look at me. <laughs> little petulant me. <laughs> look at me. But I'll tell you the, the reason. Really, it's not the clothes. It's my, it's my family. Oh. Uh, God, I love them. I love my family more than anything. And here is what I have asked them to do. Because I'm going to this fancy thing tonight, and I never go to fancy things and never get invited anywhere, my, my wife is going to get a fancy dress, and she's going to join me. Oh, nice. Here is the dilemma. I work here in Fairfax, Virginia. Right. We live about 20 miles away. Right. So the option of separate cars is, is not, not one that even, and I'm a big fan of separate cars anywhere. It just mm -hmm. doesn't work. Right. You know, my wife would get there before I got there. She doesn't know as many people as I do. We should go together. So the option should be she should just meet me here at work tonight, and then right. we drive together to Baltimore. Right. Straight there. You know, not to mention the fact, hello, I got a designated driver with me. Right. Because right. one thing I found out about my limited time, the, the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I've, I've been with the Models, uh, I do like I do like to drink. It gives me courage. You can get a little uh, you know a little pop or two uh, under your belt, and you, you enjoy the party a little more. So uh, so I say yesterday to my kid, who I you know who I love with my whole heart, right. I said, Hey, I need you to do me a favor. Uh, tomorrow I need you to drop mom off at the station mm -hmm. at about uh, seven o'clock, right when Uncle Mike and I get done with the show. And he said, 
Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. All right, well, um, okay, I'll check my schedule. And I didn't really give it a lot of thought. And then uh, today, I, I mentioned, uh, hey, I'm ready. You know, come on, you got to, are you going to do me that favor? And he had his 19 year old attitude, although I get less of it than my wife does. Uh, he said, oh, I, you know, I don't know, I got plans tonight. And then I said, listen, sure. Forget it. I just asked you to do a favor to drive Forget mom. Forget it. To, 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 Forget to drive mom to work. Forget it. You don't need to drive anybody. I'm halfway home. Then he says, he said, do you think mom would let me borrow her car? And I said, I don't know. Maybe she would. I said, go ahead and ask her. Right. So he goes downstairs, and I happily go back to whatever I'm doing. I hear from downstairs. <laughs> So, and, and, I'm, and I'm two floors away. Yeah. Now, I come downstairs and I go, hey, 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 children, you know, what, what is happening here? And she's sitting there reading a book out, on, out, out, out outside by the deck, and she says, nothing's been going on. Bart's just been yelling at me. So was Bart doing most of the yelling? Yeah, but see, here's the thing. God, I see, with both, it's impossible to keep both of them happy because I understand why each of them is at each other's throat. Mm -hmm. right. I see, dare I say it? That in this relationship right now, in my family, I got it together the most. Right. This is a sad time of the state of my family <laughs> when I am the emotional rock, when I'm the guy. You don't like that role. That's got it together. No, no. Mike, I'm fine with it. But you don't like being. You don't like being a peacemaker. No, I no, I don't. And I don't like. I don't like people being mad at me. You know, you listeners, I don't care. I mean, but in real right. life, real. I hate when people are mad at me, and I hate when my family is is unhappy. Not with me, even just when they're unhappy in general. I drive them crazy all the time with the, you know, how you doing? You okay? Mm -hmm. Is there something you're not telling me? You know, mm -hmm. that's just the way that I am. So they're is going, everything all right? So that yeah. Uh, well, no, Mike, thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I was now, using that as an example. Like that. Yes, but thank you for asking. Right. Because here's the thing. It's a simple process. Mm -hmm. The kid takes his mom for a 45-minute car ride tonight to help out. Uh, she says to me, by the time I get downstairs, she said, well, part of the problem is, first, Bart has a date tonight or something and really doesn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, I think he wants to borrow my car. Your producer is here. Hi, Beth Ann. Keep going. Keep talking. Like what I'm are you not doing? Even here. I just want to check to see which white is the best. Oh, come on. Dude, white is white. Ask Rob. It's a rental. White is white. I got it. For strength? Now, she's, help. she's being I very helpful. I appreciate it. Whiter the better. I appreciate she it. Says, come on. She's being very helpful. I, okay. The, the she's going to knock this out while you're doing the show. Ignore these strands of threads. Do you need me to, you need me to take the shirt off now? No. You're not ready yet? No. Okay. Are you going to be in the shirt? I mean, are you, is it, how's this going to work? I'll take the shirt off and you take it in the other room. Okay? Baby! You tell me. Yeah! Baby! Hi, baby! <laughs> Hi, baby! <laughs> so it should, be nice. a, it should be a simple thing yeah. that, that, you know, they do this. And, and she says, the reason that he wants to borrow my car is not because my car is not it's because his car is filthy. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, uh, given, this is a fact. Right. My kid is 19, he's going back for his sophomore year in college in three weeks, we're counting the days, and his car is a mess. And lives out of it. A lot of the stuff that he's got in the car is stuff that he's never brought in the house from when he got back from college three months ago. Wow. Okay, well, it's the way he is. Right. You know, it's like I've said all along with him, lower your expectations and you'll be pleasantly surprised. I think yeah. he's a good kid, but he's just going through whatever the hell it is that he's right. going through. Mm -hmm. So, I leave them for one second, and he says... Dad, come here, come here. I, so I come into the kitchen, and he says, look, Mom's going in my car. Oh. So I said to him, like you would say to a dog, I said, okay, now I'm going to go out and talk to her. You stay. <laughs> and I mean, don't come outside. You may look out the window, out the kitchen window, but you stay. Don't come out. And he goes, okay. I go out to her, and I go, what are you doing? I go, what are you doing? She says, Look at this car. This car is a mess. This is the reason that he doesn't want me to ride in this car. This, this car is a mess. And she had some piece of, 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 of looked like a, part of a car seat is what she had in her hand. Apparently, uh, there's, <laughs> there's, a, really? Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's a, it's a used sport utility vehicle that's okay. got like, Three rows of seats, and, oh. and one of the seats has come apart or something. So, oh, dear. so you know, he, he's a kid. So she's holding this thing up, and she said, "Well, now look, what do you think this is from?" And I said, "And this is this is where I screwed it up." I said, 
I'll tell you where I think it's from. I took it from her hand, threw it in the car, I shut the door, and I said, I don't want you to go near this car. I don't want you to worry about this. I don't I want you to I want you to chill out and I want you to be happy and don't worry about this kid and his car. Whatever it takes, I'll get you to the station tonight. And she and she said, Now wait a minute, hold on. You're telling me to be happy, but you're yelling at me. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm I'm trying real hard not to yell at you. So the way that I leave it is here's how I left it with these two. It's my own personal experiment. I said to them when I left the house today, because they, they were aggravating me so, I said, here's what we'll do. Mom, uh, Frida, I called her mom in front of Barb. Of course. I said, Mom, you just call a cab. You take a cab. Actually, I said, do you want me to get you a cab? And she said something snippy like, no, well, gee, I think I could handle that, calling a cab. Mm -hmm. I said, would you like me to call you a car service? She said, no, I'll call a cab. Don't worry about right. it. Meanwhile, I said, so I said to her, okay, bye-bye, see you tonight. Mm -hmm. And then I walked past him, because they were in separate rooms, and I said, okay, See you tonight, bud. And uh, I guess a taxi is going to be taking mom so she can meet me tonight. Mm -hmm. And he says, okay, and I leave. Now, this was two and a half hours ago. I've not heard a word back. So you haven't gotten an update? No. My thought is that by now... What, did she want to be transported in his car? She what? wanted... I think she wanted to be transported in any car. There's, there are so many... Le right. See, listen, this is why he's right and she's right. She's right, because I'm not kidding you when I say, you open any door of my kid's car except the, pa except the driver's side. You open the passenger side, there are shoes, Slurpees, uh, boxes of half-eaten cereal, Ew. CDs, uh, T-shirts, baseball hats, uh, woofers, uh, bass speakers, uh -huh. uh, more CDs, more books, trunks full of clothes from college in which instead of bringing them in, he's just opened up the trunk, taken out what he's needed, and thrown the rest back in. Mm -hmm. Not to mention wrappers from every possible fast food destination on the planet <laughs> and just a general smell of mung Jeez. in the car. Uh -huh. So having said that, yeah, right. I can understand. This is where I think Frida well, has. Can you sit on the passenger side of that car? Uh, technically, yes. <laughs> Te you know, technically, yes, you could, but okay. you would be you would be surrounded by filth. Yeah, you'd be grossed out. So the problem, that, and I understand my wife's standpoint on that, and I agree with her about that. Of what would it, be if he chose to overhaul it? If he chose to really get it? I mean, get it like your car, get it showroom clean. <laughs> what would be the time commitment that would be required? Really, if he really worked, like maybe two hours. Two hours. Two Sounds hours right. of real, you know, ball busting work. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm gonna let all you guys know like, one of the trade secrets, you know, and this is a kid that my this is a secret my kid should know. Anytime your wife gives you a job to do <laughs> Buzz knows this one. Yeah. Anytime your your wife gives you a job to do. Uh -huh. And and kids, you can do this with your parents as yeah. well. Because this thing about overhauling a car, the way I've described it, and if you looked at my kid's car, you would think it's a weekend worth of work. Mm -hmm. Really, if you set your mind to it, mm -hmm. it's a two-hour, maybe it's a 90-minute job you really work take the big, off. Take the trash can out to the car. Right. You know, so, just, just chuck everything. But, guys, now here's what you do with your wives. Mm -hmm. Say there's something your wife's just been on your ass to do. It's not a major undertaking. But because she expects so little of you, what you do is you, you pick a time when she's not around. Mm -hmm. And, like, for instance, when I painted that room upstairs for my wife, right? I went up there, and I painted for maybe a good four hours to get both coats done. When she came home, she was blown away that, that this work was done, and she said, my God, it's so, it's so well done. How long? And I said, I don't know. 10, 11 hours? <laughs> I've been up here all day working on this right. thing. And, mm -hmm. and see, she buys it because she thinks I'm a dope. Sure. And in many ways, she's right. I, you know, it's just... I understand. If you apply yourself... And this is what I'm trying to... And I couldn't get these words across to my son today. It, it, mom would think so much better of him. She thinks that cleaning that car is a major undertaking. And if he just would just get in there and do it, why won't he do it? Because she wants him to. Mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of it. Probably. You know? I don't, it's just not a priority. And, and, and also, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this or not either. Whatever it is that my wife and my son are going through, which is no big deal, but, like, they're not talking to each other <laughs> right now, I want to say, if it was me, mm -hmm. I would be out of my mind. 
It, just because me and the way that I am emotionally and the way that I am about all things, I would be out of my freaking mind. You like some closure. But they're you mean, both... If it was you, what? If it was if you it on was, either end? No, if it was me having a, a thing with either Bart or with Frida that was to this level where there was yelling and then there was just, well, I just won't talk for the next three weeks. Well, I just won't talk. So it's a delicate balance where you're trying to... Uh, you're in the middle whether you want to be or not. And I think and you're trying to... Uh, you, obviously, both of them are getting along with you. Yes, Mike. And both of them are getting along with you. And if you were, if you were to be more... Uh, how, how can I, I choose sides? Proactive, one of them is going to be angry at you. Right. But the thing is, I see, Mike, this is, this is the tough thing. <laughs> when you've got it together, like me, yes. and, and understand, <laughs> yes, I know I'm effed up. I like but the in this, sound of that. But in this situation, for <laughs> right. whatever reason, right. I feel like I've got it together. Right. When you've got it together. You simply put the laboratory rats together with what you think is going to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what I think is going to work is I think they're going to find the cheese and that he's going to clean the car on his own today at least enough to make a nice spot for mom, and he's going to drive her in today. That's what my gut tells me. It's 3.30 now. <laughs> Mm. When are you going to uh, I'll call now. check it? You're, you're really more optimistic than I expected you to be about that. So, because they're both they're both wonderful people. Well, of course they are. It's my wife and my kid. What am I going to say? <laughs> they're both jerk races. No, they're both wonderful people. But if they would go their separate ways and just get along, and that I, would be good too. Hi, hi honey. Hi, baby. And I think a lot of parents go through this with their kids. You know, where you get the kids just. Is just rebellious and just yeah. has the, you know, and, and you know, like Fred and I have discussed, at least Bart's not rebellious to where he's out like setting houses on fire and right. stuff like mm -hmm. that. That's yeah. good. Yeah. He's, he's just, That's uh. lowered expectations. <laughs> he's just what he is. <laughs> Darling. I've, made, I've already, uh, I've got a cab coming to pick me up tonight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Well, there's the answer to that. Yeah. Was there, was there at least any discussion about it? Uh, I'm, there's nothing to discuss, my darling, so no. Ay, ay, ay. I thought for sure, you're sure you must be disappointed. I thought for sure that you two would come to some. Is he even there? Yeah. What would you ask? Does he know I talked about it on the radio? We, he he just turned it on two seconds ago because I was paying bills, and so I, I turned it down while I was thinking. And he so he turned it up, and he we just both heard that, and then the phone rang. Oh. You talk to him? Yeah. Yeah. Put some P R E S S U R E on him. Let's see. No, he's. I'm sure he's he's more than willing uh, to do whatever I ask to give you to give you a ride to the station. Sure more, I don't want one. Why not? Why? Why? Because yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous that you know I, I I hesitate to say anything with him in the room because I certainly don't want to get going on anything anymore. But I it it's just ridiculous that a mother has to ask for something like that. And then and be yelled at. It's ridiculous. So I, I just assume not. Yeah. I wish you were together like me. I, I am together. Had... I'm perfectly happy. And perfectly <laughs> I'm kidding. Fine. I'm kidding, honey. I listen. This is this is the nut situation. I think, like I told, but when I was when I was talking to you, trying to be comforting when you thought I was yelling at you. No, you, know, you were you were raising your voice, telling me to be happy, which is not the way. Really, as a cheerleader, you kind of suck. But but no. But, okay, but then here's what you need to hear. Let it go. If his am I doing it right now? Let it go, if his car, if his car is a mess, let it go. It's his car. I let it go. I no, then why did you go out there and open up and start going through I the was, car? I I walked. It wasn't going through. I just had never noticed in his car that. It, I, I Honey, it he's nothing. 19. Here's the thing. I, you don't even is, let me answer. I, I, I. I just, I told you then. I'll tell you now. I knew it was messy. I just didn't realize that the seats were falling off. Okay. But now that you know that, it's still... And I wasn't out there crying about it or stomping my foot. I just went, I wanted to look and see where the, what, what, what the heck was going on. Because it was weird that the seat, the back of the seat w was in the trunk, like, area. Okay. You know? Okay. I, I got you. Um, I just want to make sure everything's okay there. Everything's fine. Have you guys spoken since I no. left? Have you not spoken? Not, no. <laughs> okay. That's my choice. Uh, that's uh, now that's your choice. That's my choice. How oh, has he got a friend calling him? Yeah, yeah, he just got a phone call on the other line. It's probably, hey, dude, you hear what your dad say it on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, everything is good, my darling. All right, baby. I'm happy in my own little world. 
uh, I like B.A., love my dog, and that's all that matters. Oh, now that's, honey, that is C-O-L-D. Come on. I, those children never disappoint. I think I've seen Emily. Wow. All right, I have no further comment on this, Sorry. Your Honor. I have no comment on this. I, I like Green. I love you. I, I love you. Listen, I want to say this. I love you and I love him, too. And, and, and I don't know if you heard the stuff that I said. Yeah, I, I said all the five going for me right now in this house. Three dogs and you. I'm not worried about it. Now, what? You don't think he loves you? Huh? Oh, no, I'm talking about my feelings, not his feelings. Ooh. So you're saying you don't love him? No, I'm not saying. <laughs> I would course. never say Christ! that. I'd never say that. Sounds to me, sounds to me like you just did. No, no. Wow. Shut up. No, She's I would hurt. Never, ever She's say. hurt. I know she is. I don't know what to do about this. I'm standing out there in the backyard today like a referee with my yeah. family. You know, with her, and, and I said to her at one point, isn't this really kind of high school? Because she said to me, why don't you go tell him? Something about something and something. And, and I, I said, this is high school. Hey, why I, don't I go, why don't I, I go tell him? You didn't have to go tell him a thing. But if you were having one of your conversations with him, as you often do, you throw yourself in the middle of these things. All I said was, uh, if so I there I go. Back about taking, about having a ride to the radio station, which is an hour out of his time, I've already asked for four days off of work and volunteered to take it to help him just carry a, a boatload of stuff down to Clemson, I just th I thought it might be appropriate for you to mention that to him. And, and I, I, I did, I did, and I did mention. All that right, to him. then fine. Then either way, it's fine. So has he expressed to you that it's inconvenient for him to drop you off at the radio station? Yeah, there, there, there. It was an inconvenience. What was the inconvenience? Because I never got that. What was that? Plans with Gal Pal. Oh Ooh, man, that's cool. Yeah, and you know, Jesus. Right. And I and I told Frida I laid the best thing on him that I could. I mean, it was mm -hmm. serious. I said I asked you to do me a favor. I don't ask you to do me a lot. I asked you to do me a favor. Take mom to work today, so mom can meet me. We can go to this fancy party tonight. No, I uh, see. I don't ask for anything, so that's why I, you know. And I'm what plans would he have with a gal pal like at five thirty six o'clock? Uh, the, the it wasn't it wasn't even necessarily that it would mess up his plans, it was just that it could mess up his plans. He hadn't he hadn't conferred with a gal pal. He's a young know it all. You gotta understand that. No, it was just the possibility of potentially messing up. So are you gonna are you gonna take the pressure washer to him at all? <laughs> yeah. See the thing is I have taken the pressure washer to him. I've had the discussion with him. Beyond beyond saying to him I love you, but in a lot of ways you're a big F up and you know this is your last chance to get your get your life together. What can I say? Mm -hmm. I, I know it does no good to lecture I know it does no good to lecture. So he wouldn't respond to that is what you're saying. No, I don't think so, no. So what the hell? I, I mean, I lay the law down with him. Trust me. I'm not walking around going, you know, hey, we're best buddies. We're pals. We can bond together. Because mm -hmm. No, I just tell him the way that it is. You don't do this. You screw up. You know, goodbye. See ya. Hope you like living in a box at the end of the street. I mean, he understands the reality of that, I believe. Mm -hmm. No, and he and he conveyed to you that uh, that really... All I do is yell at him anyway, so that you know, I, he he did he did try and be friendly with me, and I said, you know, he said you're not talking to me. I said I'll yell at you when I need you, and I mean, so I, that will be the reality, because that's his impression anyway. So it might as well be the reality. I'm um, ooh, ooh, man. man, well, she's hurt. Oh. I know that. Uh, well, okay. All well, right, my sugar bear. Is, he's 19, and he and that's his new favorite thing he loves saying too. I'm 19. So look for me in the big yellow taxi. All right, I'll see you then. Okay. Anything he wants to ask, ask him if there's anything he wants to say in his defense. Uh, Bart, you don't need to talk to Dad, do you? Okay. No, he doesn't need you to say hi. He's just asking you if you wanted to. Now, okay. All right, honey. All right. So everything, everything cool there? Everything's perfectly fine. Okay. All right. All right, love you. Okay, love you too. All right. Oh, tell, tell Bart I said hi. Well, you have to do that on your own. <laughs> Would you pass along no, the message? That kind of high school for me to relay. Oh, okay. yeah, I wish you could okay. talk to him. Okay. I, I, and you know, now I feel no closure on this. You know what I mean? You may not. I mean, I'm not going to. I mean, I, I feel the. I truly feel closure. the frustration. It's, I'm not going to force my kid to go on the air. Right. I mean, well, you know. it's not a forcing matter. He's happy to. He's happy to go on the air. Yeah, sure. He said he will if you want him to. He's got no problem. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah but see, here's you, the thing. Here's the thing. Here's what I know that you guys don't know. I know that if we really draw this out, yeah. that it. it 
it, 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 this won't be good for for my real life. This, so we we'll okay. just have to wait a couple of years to get closure. This this won't be. Good. Yeah, because I think in a couple of years he's going to go grow through, or, or maybe soon. Yeah, yeah. Through, it might, and it might happen. Whatever it is it that happen. he's going through now, and I wouldn't want him to repeat some of the things that he said to me today that I had to say to him. My response to him was, you know, hey, shut up, don't talk like that about your mother. Mm -hmm. Those were. Oh, that's nice. You didn't even share those with me. It was just stuff like she yells at me all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I, I, all right. That's, you did tell me that part. I did. Okay, that's fine. I did. I tell you exactly what he's... I, and I tell you what I tell him, too. Okay. I just don't scream. I mean, I scream on the radio. I don't. I try not yeah, to scream. And, it, and it's just ironic because it, I, my voice wasn't raised all day. It hasn't been raised all day. See, but Darcy, this is, this is the part where I side with the boy, and, and I try not to. Because you're good at... You're, you are like a world-class ninja fighting a guy off the street. You can fight and be mean and 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 get your points across without screaming. You can you can do more with a silent barb than I could screaming from the, the top of this building. Only when that, only when my opponent knows they're in the wrong, as he did. You know, your opponent. My opponent. You <laughs> you compared me to a ninja, so I'm telling you, only when my opponent <laughs> knows they're in the wrong, and then they and then then. I don't have to. All I have to do is look at you if you know you're in the wrong. Welcome. Wow. Hey, listen, isn't there some network executive out there that wants to make some sitcom about what life is really like? Imagine this crazy disc jockey. Friday nights on ABC, it's A19. A19, the hit new comedy. Everybody's talking about the great fun with A19. I want Jim Belushi to play me. And let's see, we'll get uh, Courtney Cox to play you, darling. Thank you. And how about we get something like Corey Feldman to play part? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's whatever, if you guys work it out, I'll see you here tonight. I love well, you'll you. You'll see me there regardless, and All I'll right. be ready to party. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye, honey. All right. Bye, sweetie. Bye-bye. So that's what, that's what happens when you have a real kid and real yeah. stuff happens in real life. I mean, I see both. Like Judy Collins, I see it from both sides now. Yes. And Well, who's wrong? Um, see, this is where I can get into trouble. I'm, I'm not going to ask you that. I retract the question. Yeah, no, it's not fair. You know what? I shouldn't be so damn curious. It's none of my business. They are both wrong. Okay. They're both wrong. Mm -hmm. If only they could be like me. <laughs> I don't cause any problems. <laughs> I sit in the room by myself. Drinking heavily. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and why do you think? Hey, I'm with you. Why do you? Why do you think I find refuge in the? I'm waiting for the sector. teen years. You know, I'm just a few years away with my kids from the teen years, and I'm already oh. stocking up on my alcohol. It's cran grape. <laughs> Last night, I'll tell you exactly what it was. Uh -huh. It was from the Ocean Spray Company, cran grape, but cran grape light. You like this if you're yeah. weight conscious. Much fewer carbs, only ten carbs. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You get some of that, you get some absolute vanilla. And you pour two shot glasses, or as my wife said, and I thought it was a racial epithet, but you put two jigs in there. Yeah, no, that's terrible. No. I said, hey, stop saying that. That's mm -hmm. not what we say now. Right, exactly. You put two shots mm -hmm. in there. You put two shots. Rob, she said it. I she should not have. I know she did. That's horrible. I know it is. I, I don't approve of that. And I corrected her. I'm not going to see how to move forward, see, shall we? Screwy finger in my house. I have to correct her. You put two shots of that in there. Yes. Then you put about six, eight ounces of that wonderful cranberry juice mixed with grape. You put about six ice cubes in there. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you go in the room where you've got the TV. Right. And you shut the door. <laughs> and then turn you, it up. Then you turn the TV on. Mm -hmm. And no matter what it is, even if it's some... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, two and a half babies, everybody loves right. Jim Belushi, whatever it is. <laughs> you don't care. You just sit there and let it wash all over you. And you know what you do after you take a sip? You go, ah. That's what you do mm -hmm. at the end of the day. After you've, um, after you've spent all day entertaining America. Right. You go home and you've got that waiting for you. It's better than my mm -hmm. evening. What did what, you do last night? What I do every night. Which is? Cry myself to sleep. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true at all. I had a mellow evening last night. No good. What did you know, do? Well, I, oh, my, my evening, my weeks consist of on and off. Oh, right. Oh, with your kids. Yes. Right. So, so, 
Yes. <laughs> Are you looking at the clock because I just, I'm curious? Yeah, I'm curious. I don't feel. I feel empty right now. I feel like I want closure, and I and I know you, you know it's it's not. I hope we get closure out of it. You know what? Hold on, listen. We have to do a break, but tell me in ten seconds what closure you want. Tell me exactly what closure you want. Well, from your wife sounds so so sad, and we didn't get a chance to hear from your son. And listen, here's you the know, thing. It's, it's it's tough, and I just they love, love it to get it worked out. They are mad at each other, and and you're you're basically. Uh, the, I, your strategy on, on all of this is to live and let live. That's the way it's going to Let it play out. And it'll work out. Let it play out. It, just let it happen. They love each other. They're not going to do anything crazy like go at each other with axes. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know what they... Although... <laughs> hey, now! Break me the axe! Yeah. No, they're fine. No, my, I was telling you, my evening is, uh, is usually on-off. One evening of, uh, of of coping, one evening of not. Okay, uh. we, we do have to break because we've gone terribly long. Blame it on the tuxedo. Yeah. Blame it on the monkey suit. Yeah, and you're gonna get that shirt off pretty soon. <laughs> You'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. And that night was my son's birthday party. My wife invites the priest. He's always at the house. Hey, Tony. I don't. You like Grandma Glaze? Hey, you bless it. I'll eat it. She's not coming. No. Grandma just called. Started crying and hung up. She needs a purpose in life. Now, your mother is tougher than you think. So what, no f***ing D.D. now? Hey! John and Mike, uh, you know, I heard you were having a party, and uh, you're trying to get me to go, but uh, I'm not going to go if there's no f***ing D.D. Because, you know, it, it's just not going to happen. Thank you very much. The Don and Mike Show. Charmingly ghetto. The Don and Mike Show. All right, well, the shirt is off, and Beth Ann is doing the, uh, doing the thing with the... Uh, the uh, sewing your button on. Sewing the button on. And stood here for a couple of minutes, yeah. and, and you know, realized, Mike, there's a reason that we have people who are against firearms in America. All right. Explain. These, I'm not sure where you're going. Yeah. It's it got to do with your shirt. These guns? Oh, yeah, these <laughs> guns. I can't be walking around with these guns. No, you, you can't. That's uh, I'd say that's some serious ordinance you have under that shirt. That's those right. weapons concealed. Thank you. Take Thank a you. look at those two. I'm trying. My God, <laughs> I'm trying. Um, Take those to the shooting range. <laughs> so, well, you know the thing is, no, you're right. Look at him. Look at him. Just big, just big old dumb arms. <laughs> big dumb arms. For you maybe. Um, so many. So many things to discuss on the show. Oh, we have a $500 secret sound uh, today. Yes, it's $500 today. We finally reached that milestone. Jack, that, the jackpot is going up uh, every day by 100 bucks. Uh, also today on the show, we'll have Tim Crockett, the uh, guy who lost the freaky Jeopardy guy. I want to tell you about him in a second. Had a chance last night to watch Jeopardy and watch that guy, and he is a Terminator. It is amazing. Not only does he amass an amazing amount of money when he's playing Jeopardy, but he doesn't buzz in unless he's got the answer. And, Mike, listen to this. Uh, I TiVo'd and here's what I was able to determine. He, I guess, for two or three nights now, has had more than enough to win. So he's playing with house money when he gambles, like on, on Final Jeopardy. But he still doesn't gamble that much. He doesn't get greedy. But here's the thing. He now, three times in a row, has won $52,000. Right. Wow. If he bet one more dollar, mm -hmm. he would have set a new Jeopardy record. He's had three times to do it, mm -hmm. and he purposely is not betting Enough money to set the new record, and it's pissing Alex Trebek off. Alex, uh, just as an observation, this is a casual observance, Alex Trebek hates him. He yeah. wants him dead. Yeah. Oh, sure. Alex doesn't want to build a relationship with anybody. No, Alex uh, wants them on and gone. I watched it last night, and I was curious. Third eye. The, uh, do you think the 52,000 thing, is it some Mormon thing that he shouldn't compete or shouldn't try to better himself I don't know. or something because it doesn't seem to make any okay, sense here's, to me. Here's the deal with this guy. And we're, we're going to have a, a guy on uh, next hour who lost to him on Monday night. And the people last night that lost to him, I mean, they, they're like negative $100. Now, here's, wow. what's, here's what's interesting about this. It probably because I've gone, it, it got some uh, stuff from Jeopardy.com. He's won 37 shows in a row. Uh, last night he won $52,000. So far he's won $1.246 million. Wow. Now, if he wins tonight, 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 they do not start the new season of Jeopardy until September. They have never had a situation where they have had a champion who has won thirty, however many, thirty-seven in a row. Right, right. 
where it's going to come to the end of the production schedule. And they're going to have to wait to bring him in next year. Yeah, and they're making this out. The Jeopardy people are making this out like it's a problem for them. Don't believe them. No, no. This. This, is, this is the best thing that they could have possibly hoped for. It doesn't look to me like the guy is beatable. And Alex wow. Trebek uh, says, uh, are you just trying to annoy me? Mm -hmm. uh, when, when the guy doesn't bet enough right. to go for the record. You know, because he's tied the record for most money won in one so that, day. That speaks to the fact that Alex Trebek hates him. Yes. Sure, well, listen, there's no more. Why isn't the guy doing that? There... <laughs> Piss Alex. Really? Stay on the yeah. show. Yeah. Why would you do that to when have you're some winning fun. that? I mean, because you're so confident in your, your abilities and to have some fun. Because, and maybe... The quiz show, they could certainly arrange to have the guy lose. <laughs> maybe because Alex Trebek has said, you know, maybe behind the scenes, hey, you know what would be nice? If you set the all-time record. I while frankly don't this. think there's a game show on television that's uh, as fixable as Jeopardy is. <laughs> it's one thing you do. Oh, that little buzzer. Didn't seem to work that well. Right. Yeah, and that. But, but the thing is, that's a complaint of a lot of people. I think you would really have to do like the movie quiz show. You'd mm -hmm. really have to feed them the answers, mm -hmm. so they could feed just, somebody else the yeah, answers. Yeah, you would just so that they would just constantly have their finger on the button. And yeah, but with Jeopardy, you could you know see it wouldn't guarantee by feeding somebody else the answers. You wouldn't guarantee that they would be able to beat the guy because the guy might be quicker. The way you guarantee a uh, a loss is for that. That uh, buzzer to be completely defective. Delayed by milliseconds. Or to emit a mild shock. <laughs> yes, like every time he touches it. Not, yeah. Why does it have to be a mild shock, a Rob? A severe yeah, shock. I would say that you would have... I'd go with both. I would combine both. I would say... Yeah, uh, to be a slam dunk. Give the guy the answers, uh -huh. but also... Just put a little delay on the other guy's buzzer. No, but you have to have somebody backstage mm -hmm. who would randomly do it. Like every third or fourth time, you'd say, Hey, you know that smart guy on the end who has $20? He keeps buzzing in. Let him go ahead and get in first this time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just right. once in a while, like, it would be like a random thing. I don't think you have to make it that complicated. You do the two. The one that you suggested with feed one guy the answers and have the buzzer, just a little bit of delay, and you're, you're done. You have a new champion. Uh, hello, Mike. Don and Mike show. Yeah. Hey, did you guys notice last night um, when he was talking to the female contestant that as he walked away from her, he muttered to himself, nice-looking girl. I didn't hear Who's that. that? Alex? Alex? Alex Trebek Alex, said that? Swinging Alex, Alex Trebek. Trebek said that. I couldn't believe what I heard. He well, haven't we started... established the fact that Alex Trebek yeah. is a bit of a hump anyway? <laughs> Super hump. <laughs> Hello, Karen. Yes. Hi. Uh, Hi Karen. I do know the answer to that question because uh, Regis asked him on the Regis Kelly Lee show the other day. Ah. He holds the the gentleman who, who holds that um, that status of the most amount of money won in a single game in such respect he doesn't feel like it's necessary for him to take that honor away from him. I, you know what? I think that's great. I think that's ridiculous. Well, no, it's fine. I think if you, you know, the I think it's ridiculous. It's, it's a freaking game show. <laughs> game show. It's like, I love it. You know, this Ken Jennings, uh, just the other day, when they were, um, one of the categories was uh, rock stars who are, who are dead and where are they buried. Of course, that wasn't the name of the category, but that was what they had to uh, right. guess on. Right. He knew where Falco was buried. <laughs> wow. Jesus. In Vienna. Uh, darling, he knows that. May I ask your name <laughs> wow. again? Well, your name is? It's Karen. Hey, there you go. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Call her Karen. She's yeah. calling our show for Karen. 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 Okay. I found out something uh, this morning I hey, didn't Karen. know about Jeopardy. What's that? Is you know that there is actually a light that the contestants can see. You can't see at home, and until that light goes out, you can't ring in. Really? And if you ring in before the light goes out. You cannot ring in a game. Ooh. Wow, so you're locked crazy. out. So that's one reason. And that's the way they explain it to you. They say a game. Hello, uh, Diane. That's like when he's on the transvestite line. I slice the tomato a game. Have it, then have it a game. And Hello. have it and have it a game. Hello, Diane. Are you there? Hi. Hi there. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Did you happen to notice that Alex screwed up Ario's speed wagon last night? I saw that. Yeah, what did he that say? That was hilarious. What did, hold on. What did he say? Cause yeah, I, I, Rio. 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 Speed wagon. Rio. Oh, Rio. Rio. Speed wagon. Rio. Oh, that's great. That's right. <laughs> Rio. Speed wagon. All right. Thank you, Diane. Yeah, the champions got Alex to back off his game. Mm -hmm. See you later. His usually flawless game. Well, <laughs> now, and Trebek will have like six or eight weeks to stew on it. Bone up. 
Because they're not going to have the new episodes uh, for right. a couple of uh, months. So they'll have the big Jeopardy war room as they're thinking about how they can take this guy down. There is one way they can do it. Is they found out, I mean, it would be crooked, but he doesn't know anything about sports. Really? Yeah, uh -huh. he's really, really, that, like well, me, that's his weak bag. Wow. So if they were to skew towards sports well, what, or drinking. Every once in a while, don't, don't they put like a generic sports category up yeah, there? One category won't do it. Right. It's not enough to kill this guy. I do. That's an impressive question, knowing where Falco was buried. <laughs> Now listen, that's amazing. You know, it's the end of the week, and I just want to tell you, write down stuff to talk about that we never get to. And, and you know why? Because I always talk about stupid stuff like my family driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, we will not get to all of this today. Mm -hmm. But I must tell you about Kirstie Alley, Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, I, here's a one Kirstie line. Kirstie Alley ate Kiefer Sutherland? Uh, <laughs> yes. yes. Um, the Sopranos, maybe you read this in the paper. You know those new episodes? Right. They'll be on in 2006. What? It's now what half, the hell with that? It's now the half, halfway point of 2004. <laughs> we, don't, we don't even know when in 2000. So over two years away. Yeah. yeah. So that, you know, uh, I don't get it. I don't get it why here's, they get a free okay. pass. But, but here's, listen, I, I have to tell you about this. The latest reality show, and you're going to have to admit that this, that this one is good. Man, are people on the phone about this Jeopardy? Game. Sure, it's hot. Jesus, it Christ. is the hottest television show in in, For in God's sake. broadcasting. Uh, hello, Rob. Uh, another yeah. Jeopardy caller. Yes, hi, Rob. Hey, how's it going? Okay, I'm. Uh, I'm wondering about Alex. I think the reason why I don't think he wants to see the record broken. I think he wants this guy to get greedy and start betting more, so maybe somebody else will get lucky and uh, boot his ass off. Don't you think that? Uh, no. Right. The indication I hung up on you probably says I you didn't know, think so. You know, here's the deal. With Alex Trebek and everybody associated with Jeopardy, they, they don't not dislike the guy. This is the best thing that's ever yeah, happened to Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, Don hi. and Mike. Yeah, hi. Weekend is here. Time to have a beer. Oh, hold on. Not quite right. Wrong. We forgot. No offense to the Orientals. Hey. Weekend is here. Have a can of beer. All right, thank you, and listen, that's me, so great. You made me laugh at the Oriental thing, my friend. Thank you uh, very much. Um, <laughs> Worth it. Now, there are reality shows, and there are reality shows. <laughs> I want right. you to listen to this one. Right. This is something from Variety. It's a new one. This is a new one, and it's not even on television. It's going to be on Showtime. Okay. Now, think of this as the blueprint for the show. Mm -hmm. The Larry David Show. All right. So it's a show about a celebrity where the celebrity is going to go through situations that in some way mirror his or her life, mm -hmm. but while showing he or she in a less than favorable light. So this is like the Larry David Show? Except here's the best part. It stars Kirstie Alley. <laughs> and you know what the name of the show is? The name that she chose for the show? What? Fat Actress. <laughs> now, how great is this? Now, is this, so a la Larry David, it is it is scripted. It is not a real. Um, I mean, it is not a reality show. It is more. It's a comedy show where they they either ad lib it or but it's, yes. they put themselves in fake situations. Yes, right. And the main thing that Kirstie Alley is going to do is, you know, like, like you don't know if you haven't read the Inquirer, she's just saying, yes, I'm fat. I'm having problems finding roles because I'm so freaking fat. Right. And that's going to be the show. It's going to be on Showtime. It's called Fat Actress. Wow. I'm starring, there. I'm going to watch it. Starring Kirstie Alley. That's pretty amazing. Well, you know, nobody disagrees that Kirstie Alley is funny. She yeah. is a funny actress. And back in the day, like 200 pounds ago. Oh, my she God. Was hot. She was so hot. One time. Babe, babe. I guess when she had the news conference to announce the show, she brought in a, a box of Krispy Kreme donuts and <laughs> set it down next to her. Not a, bo not a box, but no, Bigger than more than I a saw, box? I saw this thing on the Channel 2 News in, in New York. 24 Boxes yeah. of 12 donuts. That's yeah, hilarious. 24 12 packs. God bless her. Of, of Krispy Kremes. Oh, and hold on. About me watching the news in Los Angeles? Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, Beth Ann gave me a note. Let me see. Today we got the Jeopardy guy on. Monday, we'll have one of the moms from Fox's new show, Trading Spouses. Ah. And from KCBS TV in Los Angeles, weather girl, Lisa Joyner. How oh, excited are you? Right. Now, what am I going to do? What how, I, how are you? I think, how I excited are you about this? What am I going to do? She is going to think I'm the perv of all pervs. Mm -hmm. I live in Washington, D.C. I watch a TV station in California. Uh, right. Just because she's so goddamn perky and cute. Uh, I, I wish I, I would be able to see her. 
Right. Mike, I do. I feel so jealous. Someday, someday you may be able to get those West Coast feeds. <laughs> and, uh, then, uh, you know, we have fantasy football coming. So Tuesday, I think uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, one of the days. Someday, so, the Fantasy Pro Football ma- Forecast Magazine guy's coming on. Okay. Uh, tell us uh, who to take and uh, who not to take. I'll have a oh, notepad for that one. Kiefer, listen. Here's the deal with Kiefer Sutherland. First. 24, a show that we all like. I think you went hot and cold on it, came back towards the end. Previously on 24. It's coming back, but everybody's gone. Even it, even Kiefer? Except Kiefer Tugland. Everybody else is gone. Wow. Alicia Cuthbert, gone. Gone? Gone. Pres- president's wife, gone. What about the president? Big black president? Gone. Really? However, he has been replaced, and big a black president, incidentally, <laughs> copyrighted by one of the Don and Mike show listeners. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. Um, He's being replaced by the congressman or senator who was saying to him during the last couple episodes last year, hey, I know what's going on. Oh, it would be best if you stepped aside. Ah. So he will be the only returning face. Uh, the moon, moon, moon pie face moon girl, gone. Gone. she's gone. Tony Almeida, gone. The girl from the Larry Sanders show, Gone. They gotta feel a little bitter about that, I would imagine. That so they cleaned all, house on the cast. They're all gone, and he he took his clothes off again. You know, he does this all the time in in New, in New Zealand. With one of those deals, uh, I don't know what it is. It's, he was in the oh, he was in the Men of Steel Male Review Club. Now, what's he doing there? He's and he gets up on the stage, and they start playing the, the Tom Jones song. You can leave your hat on. And he starts, you know, he's done this before. You can leave your hat on. He just, he just starts taking his clothes off. Previously, when I was nude. There he is, and that's, and that's. I'll take my clothes off when I want to. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story with him. I love Twenty Four. Yeah. Um, oh, and, and listen, the last thing we got to get to a phone scan that I wanted to mention uh, this weekend. If you got a chance in your, if, if you say in your prayers, think about poor George Eads. Um, CBS is still sticking it to him. They're not going to give him uh, the rollback? Georgia Fox has gotten her job back on CSI. Right. But apparently this guy, George Eads, the guy who compared himself to the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. He's screwed. Yeah. The thought right now is they're going to do the show without him. They're going to promote one of the pimply face guys, like the other guy that was on the Larry Sanders show. Very good. To take his place. Yeah, that's too bad, but that's what happens when you mess with him. Yeah. So that was, that was that was all I had. George Eads. Uh, Funny. Yeah, I know that's good a lot. Good stuff, though. Oh, and uh, anybody on uh, CSI up here nude in a club? No. All right. No. I was the Pardon me? The guy with the crutches. Yeah, the guy with the crutches went to New Zealand. And got up on a stage. Here's the lineup. You know, I wish we knew that guy's name, we that character's name. You know, for being the most watched show in America, mm-hmm. not a lot of people rap about CSI. No, and they don't know the character names. I don't hear a lot of uh, talk about it with people. It's, it's all about the corpses. I guess it is. And, and the pretty lights. Right. You know, anyway. Uh, you know William Peterson. You know March Helgenberger. And I don't know their characters. And, except Grissom. Right. And uh, you now you know George Eads only because he's the big dorky guy that got fired. And doesn't George Eads sound like he ought to be a big fat character actor? Who's the brother on that show? I have no idea. The guy that goes Forgotten out, his name. The guy that goes out and, and gets the evidence? Yeah, I know. Uh, now, now, for instance. That on, went swimming in the swamp one time? On a... Uh, CSI Miami, mm-hmm. I know that one of the guys is named Speed. <laughs> I didn't know that. Right? I didn't know that. Uh, I have no idea who the, the coroner girl, though, is. Uh, the sister with a big... Yeah, the one that talks to the bodies? Yeah, and, and... Oh, you had a nice life, didn't you, baby? Yeah, and every week... Now, they... That kind of reassures me. If I ever was in that situation, I'd have somebody talking to me like that. They put Who her... did this to you, sweetie? Lower and lower cut tops every week with that girl. And, and... I know her name is, is Candy Alexander, because she used to be yes. on news radio, but right. I don't know her character yeah, name. That's I don't think a you foreign need... name if I ever heard one. And then I don't know her name, but whoever that blonde is on CSI Miami... Oh, now, we spit that's Emily Proctor. Proctor. Emily Proctor, yeah. Emily Proctor is... I know that name. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I clear them out here. Let's do a phone scan at 877-365-3636. Your calls, uh, unscreened calls, anybody can call. Oh, I did want to mention one last thing. Mm. This is this is this is funny and saves everybody some time and saves everybody some aggravation. Did anybody really ever watch Joan Rivers and Melissa Rivers on the red carpet? I mean, beyond. Mike, beyond turning it on and saying, oh, there it is, mm-hmm. and turning it off. I mean, did you watch all 
two hours? No, 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 no. Okay, well, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, all right, I did. <laughs> okay. Well, then, this will this will interest you. Yes. That they had a sweet deal at E! Exclamation point. Right. Joan and Melissa Rivers. They got offered a job by, you know what the TV Guide channel is? No. TV Guide the channel. The TV Guide channel where they just scroll up the yeah. uh, mm-hmm. yeah, with, with what's on. But they mm-hmm. have programming at the top of the screen. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. And so they got some losers, like guys like Byron Allen. Yeah. They're always on the top of the right. screen, like in, interviewing uh, nobodies. So TV Guide channel says, hey, Joan and Melissa Rivers, you're so great on the, on the carpet for the uh, Emmy Awards and, and the Oscars and everything else. We're going to pay you. D- double what you're making, two million bucks a year to come work for TV Guide Channel. Th- they said, okay. Oh, okay. They're gone. Oh. Uh, Melissa, Missy, here's the news today. Hold on. Yeah. I've got it right here. At least as far as the Emmys are concerned, E! Entertainment Television has a deal with ABC to be the only cable venue on the red... They just signed this. Right. To be the only uh, cable venue on the red carpet at the Emmys through the 2006 broadcast. Funny. So the TV Guide channel won't be able to even be there. That's right. But Melissa and Joan will get paid. We're good. (laughs) They will get paid. I never thought it was that big a deal. But in effect, we're getting paid for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to us, Melissa. We finally did it. We screwed them over. Mom, you're looking wonderful. Oh, what a terrible dress. <laughs> and look at me, though. I've had so much plastic surgery. Look, the cleft of me, but my behind is behind oh, my neck. God, and I know I got so many things I want to say right now. Let me just say very quickly. Of course, if they hired Courtney, you love this would always be a red carpet event. And Mike, you <laughs> miss, you miss out today on the best Regis show. Ever. Really? Wow. The best Regis show ever. Regis in a bathing suit. No! On the beach for the entire first segment with Kelly. Oh, Lee. that is gross. I called Rob and I Here said, I Rob. Am on IQ. I <laughs> called him up and I said, Rob, I know you don't like the Regis show like I do, but don't even say anything. Just turn it on right now. Well, more importantly, was she in a bathing suit? Yeah, but you, uh, but you couldn't. Was it take... a one piece? No, she wore a bikini. Although mm. she wore one of those uh, a wrap around deal. wrap things around around right. her, around her bottom area. But regardless of how pretty Kelly Lee is, take a look at my skin. If you could have seen him, right? The old man legs. I'm a, I'm alligator man. <laughs> and when he when he first took the shirt off, when he made the Arnold body pose, body bodybuilding pose. Now he is seventy something. He's in great good shape for an old man. Huh? However, when it was time for the travel trivia, and you would just see Regis <laughs> sitting in a chaise lounge wearing just bathing trunks, trunks. scratching. His inner leg. Yeah. Wow, well, this show was, a, oh, gross. was the best television I've ever seen. It was so horrifying. And just the way he crossed his leg. Oh. Not right. And Old pasty, man. pretty pasty. Yeah. 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 And he got the Vish Varicose veins happening. Where are they broadcasting from? Long Island. Long uh, The Hamptons. It's Beach Week here at Long Island. It looked to be about 50 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm what, a, cold. what a great moment that was. Uh, listen, phone scan. Yes. You were Unscreened, unsolicited. Well, I shouldn't say that we solicited for them. But, sure, we did. But uh, your calls. Just call now. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Is the Don and Mike Show. I must not scream. I must not scream in front of them. I must say. I must not listen to my mind. I must not run off the set. I must not run. I must not run. I know. I know I'll break down. They'll find out I'm weak. They'll find out I'm in pain. Oh, God. What God? I will break down, look like a fool, an idiot. They'll find out I can't act. Can't act. Can't act at all. End of the vision. Well, there must be a way out. And my mind is telling me there's a way out. You get a nice, cool gun. We'll talk with Phyllis Diller and continue with our panel right after this. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe. Hello. Cletus, what are you beating your gums about? More entertaining than a litter of acrobats. 
Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. How about that Beth Ann McBride? Look at that button mm-hmm. sewed is, on. Is he a can-do producer. Sure he is. Button sewed on. Got the tuxedo on. Look at you. You look like you're ready to seat somebody at a table. Look. Oh, no, hey. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey. Now you look like a man, Bob. Hey, hey. Um... Would you like smoking or non-smoking? This is the one you'd love. This is the one you'd love the best. Hi, welcome to O'Mara's. Look around, cafe. You know, it's just a hunch, but I do not think that that is going to be the outfit that people will be greeted by. We're a little more casual than that. But wouldn't you love me there in a tuxedo? In a tuxedo, any time. You know what? Here's the deal. Whenever you, when you come back. I want you in a tuxedo. And you know, the thing is now, if anybody asks me if you're there, yeah, you're always there. <laughs> it happened the other night a lot. Is that what you tell people? Oh, we're, yeah. We're yeah. Don, he's like, and I, I, wherever I am in the restaurant, yeah. I always point to the furthest part from where I am. Yeah. Look around, cafe. Yeah, he's he's back around on the right side, under the uh, the Red Sox side. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they go happily off looking for it. Listen, really, I, and I don't mind because, you know, if it makes someone stay in Mike's joint a little longer. Right. Mm-hmm. But know the truth. I will be in Mike's as soon as the Boston Red Sox win the American League East. I, we will hold you to that. Okay. We will hold you to that. And, of course, uh, I think we'll, we'll be, I'll be coming back from Boston this weekend with some answers. I might be coming back Monday with, uh, with a desire to maybe uh, to, to jump the gun. Just to uh, pay, pay the bet off. Early, in it? Which, I, which, I've done, uh, which I've done before, but, uh, but maybe not. We'll see what happens. Okay. Hold on a second. Hold on. Still holding out hope. You know, Mike, I've got so much stuff that I've been holding on to all week. Could be decided this weekend. Give me one yeah. second. I know we got phone calls coming up, but hold on. Just give, give me a second. Um, let me find this. Um, and Dave Loggins is incidentally calling you, Mike, all weekend. Dave Loggins, what's the song? Please come, come to Boston for the springtime. Yes, I will be in Boston. Oh, hold on. Here it is. The Red Sox and the All Yankees. right. Sporting News says, History says the Red Sox have no chance to catch the Yankees. Mm-hmm. Teams begin a three-game series today at Fenway Park. Yankees have an eight-and-a-half game lead. Right. That's ten-and-a-half because Mike added two to our bet. Right. Um, Derek Lowe said, believe me, we know about how no team has ever blown a lead uh, this big. Um, the thing is, time has told an increasingly predictable story for the Red Sox. If anything, the difference this year is that the gloom and doom, which typically arrive in October, have arrived early. Yep. After starting this season 15 and 6, the Sox have gone 37 and 37. Mm. They don't have a safety net. Johnny Damon said, I think we're seven or eight games over 500. You know what they're saying about him in Boston, though. But it feels like we're 20 games behind. The Boston sports writers are saying the Red Sox are a Fortune 500 company. They're getting paid a fortune and playing 500. And Mike, <laughs> even your beloved fans. At Fenway Park, have turned sour, mm. booing several Red Sox players. Oh, I'm sour. I'll boo. Mm. Yeah, let me see. And then anyway, it's just it's all the. I'm odds. very sour. In fact, if, if you go to Vegas, uh, the odds right now of the Red Sox coming back to overtake the Yankees are something astronomical, like over two thousand to one. Well, I am uh, looking forward to a nice bitter reunion with Fenway Park this weekend. Whereas I was reading somewhere that the odds. What was it? Man, I got to get this thing from the sporting news. The odds of the Arizona Cardinals getting to the Super Bowl this year are better than the odds of the Boston Red Sox winning the American League East. Yeah, yeah, and that's the best. As, that it, I mean. as it stands right now, I mean, they're very. I mean, the Red Sox still have a very good chance of going to the postseason, but they have very little chance. That's not of our bet. That. I know. Our bet. Was, I'm aware of what our bet is. Well, our bet was thought up by you, and it's a great one. Mm-hmm. That, <laughs> that uh, if the Boston Red Sox don't win the American League, have, have I ever won a Red Sox bet with by two games? When you bet against me, uh, when you bet against me over the Red, have I ever won a Red Sox? Bet? I have never lost with the Red Sox. I've lost. I mean, I've you, won, I've, I've, I think we might even be 500. I've lost on, you on, on bets. other bets. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. but no, the Red Sox never let me down. Uh, and Mike's idea this year was the loser gives Tom Gavin. A full body massage. Tom is naked with a towel on, yeah. including feet and glutes, live on the air. Mm-hmm. And that will be happening very soon. Can't wait. Gentle probe. Uh, and now uh, your calls. Oh, and speaking of that, I forgot to mention that uh, John Norman, uh, our production guy, we've had him on the air. He came up to the office today to say hi and said that he uh, went to the doctor. Uh, you know, I guess I, he, he could tell it better than me. Uh, he... 
Yeah, just something. You know how yesterday I talked about my prostate? Yeah, you're, you're your little uh, thing. Right. Hey, Johnny, what's happening? Hi, John. So, you know, we've got to be brief here, but what right. happened to you was? I uh, went to uh, for a doctor's appointment for a possible kidney stones, and uh Jeez. guy comes back into the office and says, you know, looked at your urine sample. There's some infection. We want to check it out. You ever had a rectal exam? <laughs> I had about... Yeah, exactly. I had about ten seconds to wrap my mind around that whole concept. Before before, before they dove in. <laughs> Moon River. <laughs> How'd you like it? Uh, I'm not going back. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So listen, here's all I want to say. Be very careful. This is now the curse of the finger. Yes. Oh. Who will be next? I'm afraid that I started this by going to this doctor yesterday. Mm -hmm. John Norman had it today. Who will it be over no, the weekend? No need to speculate. You already have your trifecta. Yeah? Yeah, I gave myself one last night. Hello. <laughs> John, my hey. show. Cheating. Hello. 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 I think I saw your proctologist yesterday. He was driving a brown probe. All right, get okay. out of here. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. It's Friday. Hi, Don and Mike. Phone scan. Hello. Hello. Tom, I got a question for you. Yes, yeah, sir. You're, I know you're a Green Bay Packers fan. Yeah, right. Sure am. I am, really. What do you think the chances are with a new coach for the Redskins this year? What do you think the chances are that this call stays on the air past five, four, three, two? Did you lose? Hi, Don and Mike show. Bueno Arbusto, you impactfully delightful radio gods. Thank you very much. And listen, you can talk about sports on the show. Just don't phrase it like a sports question. Right. You know, make it so that we think we're talking about something else. Yeah, if you want to talk about Joe Gibbs, talk about the Joe Gibbs performance Chevrolet. Hello. Yeah, Bakersfield, California calling in. Right on. Great. And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, hey, dear, the new uh, Army logo is Be All Your Cans Be from B's to D's. Join now. Okay, now let's mm -hmm. tell you something, dumbass. That You're calling with a joke. Now, don't turn your radio up loud to hear me yell at you. Listen to the telephone. I'm oh, hearing you. Okay. I'm hearing you. You told a joke. That was, uh, uh, whether it was funny or not is irrelevant, but it was not funny. So, no, that's not the rule, is it? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, if you're going to tell a joke, you have to tell us you're going to tell a joke. And then if you don't, if you tell a joke that's not funny, we give out your phone number. So now, here, here's how you can get out of this. Mm -hmm. What city does your mama live in? She lives in Horse City, City Heaven. There you go. Okay, and when, and when, you, and when your mom's in heaven, what's her job up there? She's uh, wiping uh, whores blankets. She's whore, uh, whore. Yeah, okay, that's okay. I think he, he left the spirit. That was the proper amount of atonement there. Saved himself. She's in whore heaven. Yeah, whore, whore city heaven. Hello, Don and Mike. Show. Don and Mike, Radio Gods. Howdy, hi, you're on the air. Thank you. Uh, Crofton, Maryland, I was saying hello to you here. I've got a... Uh, well, my wildest dream has now come true. Yeah. Thank you. Gee, uh, thank Pinocchio, now you are a real boy. Friday afternoon in Crofton. <laughs> what can we do for you? I've got a confession to make on the radio. Yeah, I am. Uh, I have an undying love for Linda Ronstadt. All right, that's okay. So how long have you been a fan? Uh, probably about two days. Ever since she got booed off the stage, I I love seeing people fail like that miserably. Well, now sure listen. Was the, the, the thought here would be that she maybe didn't fail. She got pissed off at a bunch of people who booed her in Las Vegas. Yeah, I mean, she said something political, and it wasn't met with the sympathetic response, and they kind of got mad and, and tore posters down and kicked her off the stage. And maybe that, right. maybe that's not the venue for, you know, for someone doing a... a I think it's safe to more rally. I think it's safe to say Linda Ronstadt will get other gigs. Yeah. Well, I, say, I, I, I agree, but... Uh, I, I like... find it hard to believe Linda Ronstadt had a gig to begin with, although <laughs> whenever I go to Las Vegas, I see it's like has-been city. Yeah, I mean, I would say Linda Ronstadt is a total Atlantic City, Vegas-type performer. Don't worry about Linda Ronstadt. She, you know, listen, she could be on, on that uh, Tom Hanks Castaway, she'd be fine for five years, and she could still star in the Kirstie Alley movie. <laughs> Bad actress. So uh, don't, don't, let's wait this year on Celebrity Survivor. Okay, you're just a funny one, aren't you? No, I didn't tell a joke. No, you've I actually didn't. stopped the show. You that that stopped the show. But that was, it was just that good. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was just that bad. Sometimes we can, you know, extricate ourselves <laughs> from a bad call. Sometimes we can't. You know, we we really. 
We really can't sometimes. You know, and here's one of the things. A guy like you, it's like a Band-Aid that's been on for a while. I'd love to just pull it off, but I'm afraid if I just pulled it off and yanked it off, we're not giving anybody anything when they love hearing us deal with a guy like you. So the problem with you is we'd love to just yank it off, but we have to peel you off a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, um, just a little bit at the time, and maybe you even get caught up on a scab or something on the way coming off. And now I think this might be a good time to eject. See ya. There you go. Is he are, are, are all the way ejected? There, okay. I'm He's gone. All the way ejected. Well, we saved another life. Very good. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> Don and Mike. Yeah, hi. It's Rob. Hey, I just wanted to thank you for your uh, entertainment excellence. Uh, yesterday I was so pissed I was seeing red, and my wife uh, agreed to bring me my radio just so I could listen to to cheer me up, and it worked. Hey, that's a very nice, nice thing. Well, that's yeah. nice. Thank you, my friend. That is nice. Um, that's all. Okay, good. Thank you. That's all you need. Bye bye. See, no horse city there. That, no. guy, that guy was okay. And the fact is, we've been seeing red all week. Hello, Don and Mike show. Radio guys, happy Friday. Right. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, tell you guys I'm calling from Canada and I loved your show yesterday. But, Don, I just wanted to tell you that um, our dentists up here don't do that to you. Okay. All right, now you see you again. <laughs> they don't what? And they don't do that to you. You know I didn't go to a dentist yesterday. You're trying to be funny. Okay. You're trying to be funny. And my mom's a whore. Yes, and what Canadian city does she live in? She lives in Horville, Canada. Horville, Canada. 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 Bill in Canada. Yeah. I'm proud of Thank you. Although I also want to say now, the statute of limitations on guys who can say that their mom lives in Horse City is now running out. Yes, it is. It's getting burned. We're, running, they... we're running out of room in, in Horse City. Now they want to say it. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike, radio guys. Yes, hi there. Hey, I just wanted to make sure that uh, Beth's hitting Beth Ann's daughter yet. Bart is hitting Beth Ann's daughter. Now, there's two ways of, of looking there at that. There are two ways of looking at that. Um, <laughs> there's the way, the crude way that you're thinking, mm -hmm. and then there's the crude way that my good friend Robert is <laughs> thinking. Yeah. I, would, I, would I, I certainly, uh, you I know, know would hope neither one is true. I would hope neither is true, of course. Uh, unless you just wouldn't, wouldn't listen oh, God. in either case. Oh, Hello, Don and Mike show. Kidding, of course. Kidding because I love. Beth Ann, kidding because I love my kid more than my dog. Yeah. <laughs> Even though he's driving me and my wife freaking crazy. You know, and really, just for me, that expression, I, I think, can we replace something? I mean, really, are you hitting that thing? I, I don't, because it just, it causes people like Rob tremendous amount of confusion. How, right? how about this one? You tapping that thing? Tapping. Yeah, that's not, much better than hitting. Sounds tapping. friendly. The one I use. Hello, Don and Mike show. Tap. Hello. Hello, Don and Mike radio show. The show you're listening to right now, and you took the time to dial the nine digits or ten digits, however many you have to dial if you have a one. It can be used in a variety of ways. And, uh, you know, you can say, for example, is he tapping that thing? Or mm -hmm. are you tapping that? Or how long has you... he been tapping that? Hello, Don and Mike shows. Or same guy now. Would be, boy, right. would, would I like I to tap, tap that. that. Hey, you arrived. Hi, we're here. What can we Hi. Do? You, you realize I got a clock here. I punched your lineup one minute and six seconds ago and immediately said Don and Mike show. What took you so long, my friend? I'm slow. <laughs> He's slow. Okay. okay, are you real now? <laughs> are you really slow or are you pretend slow? I'm slow. No, he's not retarded. Okay. What can we do for you, sir? I have a joke for you. No. Uh, no, not, no okay. not today. You are slow. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> not today, not today, Don. Not Hello, today. Don and Mike show. Hello there. Hey, gentlemen, I just want to tell you, I like your new venue. Our new venue? Yeah, I like your new venue. What's our new venue? Oh, just the way you're you're performing your show. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Good uh, venue, Don. Okay. <laughs> I do. I enjoy it better. Uh, not better than I did before, but I like it because now I can enjoy it with my 13-year-old son. All right. I get, I, I get what you're saying. All right. I, I dig what you're saying. Thank you, my friend. All right. We really appreciate nice. that. We can take a compliment sometimes if we if we understand the compliment. Absolutely. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hi. How are you? Hi. We're doing great. Thanks. I'm calling from Canada, so I'll try to be a good representative of Canada for once. Oh, forget worry. it. You've already blown that. But what can we do for you anyway? Just wondering what your thoughts were on that trading spouses show, if you thought that that uh, blonde mom was uh, a big witch. The tr oh, is that the Fox show? Trading Spouses. Yeah. 
She yes, she said spouses. Meet that other family. She tricked. You know, I'm sorry. It's a disqualification <laughs> when you you know really. It's because that call. You know, and the next thing you're gonna Donald start talking about picking scabs again, and we know how grouse that is. Oh, Don Mike show. Oh, and language barrier. Don Mike. Hello. Don Mike. Yes, Don and Mike show. Hello there. What's going on? Well, we're just trying to prevent this from being a losey phone scam. <laughs> what can we do for you? Hey, I was wanted to ask you something. What's your name? What's that? <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you right now, we don't know who your daddy is. <laughs> but that's the question. What's your first name, sir? Hey, uh, this is Terry. Terry in Terry. the hose. Hey, I was wondering, do you think uh, Martha Stewart's going to let Granny take a peek at her pie when she goes to prison? Now, Mike, see, all you do is encourage her. I'm sorry. You, hey, you know, like really, that. sometimes you have to have a few raisins in the pudding. <laughs> But you encourage, and this is the guy that we should have made the example out of. I now, know, I know. Look at that. Now we've got to let him out of the trap and send him back out into the uh, wilderness. I'm so sorry. And to be proper, it's a peek in the pot, sir. And to catch and release now as he just continues to listen to himself on delay. Oh, come on, Don. Cheer up and have a great day. <laughs> yeah, Don. He was troubled because he started by saying, hey, I want to ask you. Something. Hello there, Don <laughs> and Mike show. Hello. Hello. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, this is the phone scan. Hi. You, I finally got through. I cannot believe it. Hi there. Hey, I'm in your old stomping ground, Don. Wait, wait, that could be anywhere, honey. Ocean City. Ocean City. Oh, yeah, just down a couple weeks ago. Mike. Hey, yeah, and my mom's in the car back behind me. Can I say hi to her? <laughs> sure. sure. I'm not kidding. Right. Hello, Mom. I'm on the radio. Come <laughs> on, well, Mom. All right. Yeah, behind me. Yeah, that's right. Hold on. I'm guessing you didn't really have anything to call to say, but that's okay because you, you still want to... I did. I did. I waited online for 45 minutes. Your mom's in back you, so it's a caravan. I swear she is. Huh? It's a, it's a caravan. No, she's in another car. And she's got the radio on. What did I just say? It's a caravan. Oh, a caravan. I thought you meant... But, but, Never mind. But out of curiosity, are either one of you driving a minivan? No, SUVs. SUV. Hey, where you go? Right. USA. Uh, Only General Motors, because that's where my stepdad retired from. So uh, I was in the Very good. And GM. Well, how about that? All right. Uh, listen, you're the last caller on the phone scan. So you have won uh, the sleeve of Golfdom Donamite golf balls. Wow. Golfdom's anniversary sale this week. Save up to fifty percent. Plus, you have uh, two seats to see. Yes. At the Nissan Pavilion Wednesday, August 25th. Tickets That's on sale now. Ticketmasternissanpavilion.com. That's great. Okay, say, thank that you very much. Terrific. Thanks. Have a, have nice a, have nice, a great weekend. We will. Thank you. Thanks oh, a lot. Hold on just a second. Okay. What? I was just thinking caravan. You'd have the first word for it. <laughs> um, Mike, <laughs> yes. Here's a, a new single by Yes. All right. You know, the band that's mm -hmm. going to be, and, and we, we were goofing on them, because when's the last time Yes had a record out? It's been a while. Really? And I think that's why we have all these tickets to give away anyway. Here now is Yes. So I've been told. Yes, playing out soon at the Nissan Pavilion. Yeah. Right. right. Here's James. Yes. What you're cooking for Beryl's Gray. Right. What you're cooking for Beryl's Gray. <laughs> what for supper? What do you got? Granny will say this in prison right now. <laughs> Let me take a peek in my pocket. See, there, there you go. Now it's all tied together. We did. That's what the guy was saying. We did what we do. We even, had, we even worked in the, the yes thing. So that, that's what Granny says. That's right. That's what she says. Amen. The guy that was on Jeopardy, uh -huh. uh, I guess Monday, Tim Crockett. Yes. Now, he's going to join us next live from Las Vegas. He was, I think, number 32 of the 37 consecutive people wow. that this buzzsaw freak Ken Jennings has beaten on Jeopardy. All right. So he was late in the game, so he knew, he knew that going in that the guy was a buzzsaw. Yes, he did. Beth Ann has uh, talked to him in advance, and I don't know the nice way of, of putting this except to say, well, maybe he's not hip to pig Latin. Yeah. Uh, Igbe Erdne. Oh, good. Oh, Excellent. Is, is what I hear. Oh, we got Happy Friday. Yeah. We Granny? And what did Granny have? What's that? What did Granny have? She had the. Uh, Fiddles. No, no, it was the thing with the. the, the something in her. <laughs> What was the other song? The Let me song. take a peek in my pot. Thank you, Mike. And you know what I say about that? What? Sexy. Mm -hmm. Be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show.
This is the Don and Mike Show. So keep watching Jeopardy 24 hours a day and call this number. Yeah, dumb son of a bitch. You don't watch it 24 hours a day. Hi, I'm Alex Trebek, and you're yeah. a bitch. Huh? Wait. Run that by me again. I don't understand that. I didn't pause. All right, let's start cutting. There's a daily cash prize of one thousand dollars and dollars, 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 and dollars. Ah. Son of a bitch. Somebody gonna tell me why? Here's a little hint. <laughs> Pick up. Take one. $25,000. It's all on the same face. How are they gonna lose it? $25,000. Well, I'm not quite ready, so I'm gonna do it now. Dollars. It's for you. No sh Call now and play. Phone Jeffrey. You. 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 And them, too. The Don and Mike Show. Oh, my God. It's Don and Mike. Right, right. Thank you, Alex. Uh, listen, just ahead of the guy, uh, Tim Crockett, who was on the Jeopardy this week. Let's, uh, let's clear these lines. We've got a call number one. Hundred as we play for five hundred dollars. Secret sound eight seven seven three six five thirty six thirty six. Beat the hundred corner right now. Good luck to you, diarrhythmically. Uh, joining us from Las Vegas, here is uh, Tim Crockett. We lost lost to the freak on Jeopardy this week. Uh, hello, uh, Tim. Hi there. How you doing? What's hey happened? Tim, how are you? Doing pretty well. So you were on Jeopardy what night this week? Uh, did your episode air? Yeah, I was on last Monday. Last Monday. And uh, you were part of the uh, one of the many victims of this guy. Yep, I was uh, victim number 67, I think. Wow. Are you mad at him? Uh, no, no. I mean, he's, uh, he's a really nice guy. Um, you know, when, when I met him, I was like that. This found him to be one of the nicest, uh, most modest, uh, really funny guy. I hated his guts immediately, but uh, I'm not mad at him. <laughs> so you go into uh, Jeopardy, and you know the reputation this guy has. How does that affect you when you're starting? Obviously, no matter how nice the guy is, there's got to be somewhat of an intimidation factor. Well, see, the thing is, uh, the show taped a few months ago, so uh, you know, back then, no one had heard of him, and I went out there, and I was thinking to myself, like, gee, I hope I don't go up against like a five-time champion. Yeah. And now, how many had he won? How many yeah, champions yeah, when you played him? When you played him? Yeah, I, I was worried to be five or ten. I get there and they tell me he's won 33 times. I about choked. <laughs> so uh, before before they start the taping, you know this guy has won th this many, and you're just blown away. Yeah, well, they, they tape uh, they tape a, 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 like five shows in a day. So right. I had you know I had a chance to watch him for a few games before I went up against him. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's sort of an intimidating kind of thing. I would imagine. Do you so? Do you think that Alex is jealous that the, this guy's getting uh, all of the, the publicity now? <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't think so. I think uh, I think Alex, uh, you know, on screen he kind of looks like he's annoyed with Ken, and he kind of makes fun of him sometimes. But uh, I would imagine that Alex is just happy that the show's ratings are up so much. I, mean, I would, you know, I yeah. said the exact same thing. But you can't watch the show and not notice the tension between Alex Trebek and this guy. It seemed to me well, what about, that, there, that there that there was tension between the two. Yeah, guys. and what about when Alex? You can say this is kidding or not. When Alex Trebek says. You know, this is the third time you could have gone for the all-time record, and now we heard from somebody that like he's it's some nerd code that, that he's he's honoring the guy that that had the previous record. But have you noticed that this seems to be pissing off Alex? I I do, but I think uh, I think Alex is a really good actor, I and mean, I didn't see that at all. Um, so you think he's tweaking it up a little bit? Yeah, I think that's his uh, that's his way of bringing uh, bringing more people in, kind well, of creating easy, that conflict. It's, it's easy enough to find out. I mean, when the when the camera is off, how does he uh, how yeah, does Alex he behave? Or because we've heard re reputation of he's kind of difficult to deal with anyway. But how does Alex behave towards the champion? Well, you know, Alex, uh, you know, tries not to do too much social, socializing with the contestants off camera. Right. But um, I would say that he's seen a lot more 
far more friendly with Ken, you know. I mean, I think, uh, you know, whether they've actually talked about it or not, the, the two of them kind of have a, a sort of a partnership almost. Yeah, based um, on what you said before about Alex probably digging the ratings of the guys. Bring. And, and, yeah, and right. among the people, exactly. what, what about the other contestants? who were there with you, and I'm talking about now immediately, when you get there and you hear, oh, Christ, this guy's won 33 in a row. He goes through you and the other two that you're playing with like buzzsaws. Then you got to sit there and watch him tape however many more. At some point, among you guys, the collective group of, forgive me, but there's no better name, the collective group of losers, was there anybody that said, you know, that son of a bitch. <laughs> Nobody's that smart. Nobody's that nice. Somebody might question the, uh, you know, how legit he is. I mean, how is he doing this? There, was there any of that talk? Oh no. Um, no. I think when you talk to him, you, you you figure out pretty quick that he he really is that smart. But um, what I noticed was, you know, that there were you know maybe ten or twelve contestants sitting around with Ken, and and most of the people were really trying to to become his friend, and you know he's being really nice, giving everyone advice. Um, you know, I thought that was personally a bad strategy. Mm. And I think when you go up and you know, start making nice with the guy, you're already kind of, uh, you know, anticipating defeat. So well, I was trying the... best to intimidate him and get well, inside his head. But... Let's get your vital statistics. How uh, how many dollars did he win, and how many dollars did you uh, did you uh, amass when you were playing him in Jeopardy? Oh, it was. Uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it it, it turned out to be a blowout. Actually, uh, actually was ahead of him for most of the first round. Now we've seen pictures of this guy, uh, Ken Jennings. We've watched him. I'll tell you this: he's. Uh, He's an intimidating physical presence. <laughs> he's a, uh, yeah, he's right. a man who obviously works out uh, a lot. Uh, obviously could have been a star NBA, a NFL player if he had chosen. Let me ask you, sir, do you consider yourself to be as prime a physical specimen as this freaky Ken Jennings that we're seeing? Well, you know, I was, I was kind of wondering that, so, um, you know, whether I could take him. So I, I jumped him in the back lot after the show. <laughs> he handled me pretty well. Are there anything like uh, Jeopardy groupies? Are there, I mean, do they, I mean, I just wouldn't think there would. They've got to have retainers and stuff if they are. <laughs> Be the grossest. Yeah, well, uh, you, know, I, 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 you know, after the show, I, I, did, I, was, I was thinking, you know, Ken's never been to L.A. until he started coming out for Jeopardy, and I used to live there. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll go help the guy out. So I went up and, you know, I was. Let's try to tell him, you know, where to go to, say, find a hooker or score some drugs, that kind of thing. Wow. But, um, For the big he, uh, scandal. He seems pretty uh, devoted to his wife. But I'd imagine if he wasn't, he'd have all sorts of offers from now, him. Now, you should know about this guy, Tim, uh, who was on Jeopardy just a couple days ago. Uh, you know, we're on in Las Vegas. We love Las Vegas. And at least my favorite place out there is Mandalay Bay. You love that place. And that is where, yeah. that's where Tim works. At Mandalay Bay, ah. which is where they do some of the stuff for that show, uh, Las Vegas, Vegas, the one with James Conn. And also, um, didn't Fear Factor do a bunch of stuff at Mandalay Fear Bay? Fear Factor was at the pool in Mandalay. I mean, they were at the whole. They did everything at Mandalay Bay. In, in last uh, last week's episode. So you are multimedia then. I, I mean, you are you, you you hang around all these other shows. You should have, from the experience you had, you should have kicked this guy's ass because you're more experienced being around television. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, that's my job. You know, when, when people cheat in the casino, I'm the guy that takes them into the back room and breaks their hand with the ball. <laughs> ah. What is your job at Mandalay? What do you do for the casino? Uh, actually, I work in the convention center. It's uh, not that interesting. I do uh, exhibitor services for trade shows. Oh. Okay, it's kind yeah. of removed from the tough guy end. Of now, things, Tim, right? do, you, do, yeah. you, do you know, because these shows are taped in advance, the last one of the season is tonight. If, if this dude can win tonight... He rolls over until next season, which doesn't start until September. Of course, it's been taped. You would, you would know. I would think he's going to win tonight, right? Uh, well, you know, um, they haven't actually paid me my second place money yet, so uh, <laughs> okay. I don't think I'm going to go out there and uh, violate the uh, confidentiality. I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I suppose you can't do okay. that. Can so really, they haven't paid. How much second uh, place money do they owe you? Second place pays two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars you get. So when you don't win the money, then they just give you flat sums for uh, for second and third place. Yeah, second is two thousand, third is one thousand. Uh, so even if you uh, finish in negative numbers because you bet too much, you still get two grand. That's right. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. And uh, are you getting anything at all on the side? I mean, I know Mike asked you about Jeopardy groupies, but now especially that I mentioned, uh, well, I don't know if you're single. Are you single, Tim? Yeah, I am. Okay. So you work at Mandalay Bay. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been around Fear Factor. You've been on Jeopardy. You got to be getting something out of it, right? Uh, 
not really. I did sneak into Trebek's trailer and stole everything that was nailed down. <laughs> <laughs> Trebek's trailer. All right, and what's, listen, what's, what's the category that he killed you on? The, the one category on Jeopardy where he just wiped you out specifically? Well, you know, the game was probably already over by the, at this point, but the final Jeopardy was opera, which is my number mm. one least favorite Jeopardy category. Opera. And this, and, this, and this guy knows nothing about sports, right? And they've not thrown him a lot of sports questions? Oh, I, I wish there had been more sports. I'd have killed him on it. That's probably the one category in which I would have beat him. Oh, man, and sports. And they really just in general, I think, on Jeopardy, they don't, they don't do a lot of sports. Do you think, um, I, I know that he's from Salt Lake and all that stuff. Uh, do you think he's ever kissed a girl? He's married. This guy, Ken Jennings, is he married? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. didn't realize that. Do you think they ever have... Same question, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> they, yeah. Do, you think, do you think they've ever had relations? Um, yeah, I, I would think so, yeah. Do you think I mean, he's ever seen... Realize, like, did you get a you know, chance guys, to see his wife? Salt Lake City. Right. Did you get a chance to see his wife? Uh, I've, I've seen her on TV since then. I, I think she was on Regis with him. Like, Let me just ask uh, you this. Is, is she as beautiful as he is handsome? Oh, uh, they make quite a couple. Okay, there you go. <laughs> but, you know, Salt Lake City is a different world. I mean, there's there's different standards of, uh, you know. Of that beauty. In there. <laughs> right, okay, I got you. Listen, Tim, it was a great talk at the, if you stay on the line, uh, we, we, we like to, you're a good guest. We'd like to send you some Don and Mike junk, some golf balls or a hat or something, okay? Great, thank you very much. Thanks for, for being me. on the show. Tim you know, a, a part of right, history. Bye. He lost. Oh, hold on, Beth Ann needs to talk to you. Part of history. He lost to, lost to the uh, freaky uh, Ken Jennings. And I would say the house money would have to be. He's going to win tonight. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Because, I mean, that does. I mean, I didn't know until I came here today that the key, it carries over to September. All the more reason. I mean, you're going to have the biggest audience in the world when you come back in September. Yeah. The new season. And here we go with call number 100 for the Secret Sound. And it's you, Hi, Donna Mike Show. Hello. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, yes, uh, hello. 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 Oh, who is this? This is Roger. Who's this? This is Donnie Mike, Roger. Why are you calling for Sleek and Slound? Uh, yes, I am. Very, very oh, good. Oh, that's good. Rupert G. Where are you from, Robert? Uh, uh Spokane. Roger. Roger? Spokane, Spokane, Washington. Turn down radio. Turn down Sony radio. Uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. yes. You are ready to play Secret Sound game? Yes. First, first, let me tell you that you've won a sleeve of golf room dynamite golf balls just for calling the show. Wonderful. Now, are you Oriental? Asian. No. Same thing, Mike. Bill Parcells. No, I'm white. Hey. I'm, cock I'm cocky. You're, because you just have a, you, you sounded are a you, little Asian when we You're round eyes? Yeah. Cause you yeah. Could you, yeah. Definitely, yeah. you definitely have that. Who's the celebrity you most resemble? Mm, probably Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. Hey, huh. Wow. We stand correct. I'm thinking Mr. Miyagi's on the phone. We had a we had a good time for a while. Didn't oh, we? we did, Mike. We sure did. Uh, still, you've won the Golf Room Golf Balls with uh, the Donna Mike Show logo. Now you'll play for $500. Uh, it is a common, everyday sound heard by... Most bright-thinking men or women. Okay. That would be a hint. Another clue, yes. Heard, uh, by, most, heard by most right-sounding. Right, right. What is it? Right-thinking, right you thinking. said. It's a sound that would be heard by most right-thinking Americans. Okay. That's a very deep clue. Don't you think that's a deep clue, Robbie? I think it's too deep there, Don. I don't think so. No, he don't, he don't write no. any clue to be given. So here we go. I'll play you the sound now, a common everyday sound. Identify it, win $500, and we'll give you 15 seconds of Michael singing. Good luck. Caller, name this sound. Right, here it is. That. That's it. A lot of right-thinking Americans hear that sound every day. They say some of them. Dare I say it more than once? Happy talk, keep talk, keep happy talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now, there it is again. Wow, what a mighty, what a mighty sound it is. Sure is. That's a, that's the sound of me picking at my brain. There it is. It's a very, or the sound of me, um, <laughs> sound of me, you still have it loaded in there? Yeah. Yeah. Getting, getting aroused. Uh, very, very small. Not, not much happening. Wow. Um, okay, what is it? 
I would say it's an explosion from a bomb. Oh, come on now. Can't uh, you play along, jerk face? What the hell are you doing here? People were trying to get in to make a guess. And do, you you have a legit, do you have a legitimate guess? That's it. The sound of a bomb? Here's the sound of a bomb. Listen to this. It's it's the sound of dial tone, dumbass. Jesus. He wasn't playing right. He sur sure wasn't, Buzz. He was incorrect. It's not a bomb. Not That's right. weird. Okay. Let's take another call. Yeah. Well, let's give someone else a chance. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Hello. Mike radio God. Thanks. I turn your radio down, please. Uh, what's your name? My name is Kevin. Now, Kevin, where are you turn from? Turn your radio down. Hey, Kevin. Yes, sir. Turn it down, please. Where are you from? Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Now, did you hear the last guy that we had on? Yeah, I sure did. Okay, now, we don't care how dumb your guess is, as long as it's a guess that maybe kind of makes sense. I'll give you All a hint. Right. I'll give you a hint. It's not a bomb going off. Okay, so we'll play you the sound now. There it is for $500. What do you think that secret sound is? The only thing I can come up with is the sound of Carrie Spiewak's tooth hitting a, a sink. After a discussion. What the hell is wrong with people? Today? This has been the best uh, phone week ever. What the ever. hell? Yeah, what, seriously, what is wrong with people? The sound of Rob's wife's Carrie's tooth hitting the sink. That's not right. But it's a gag one. Come on. Does anybody out there want to take a real guess? No one's trying. Let's see. Hi, Don and Mike show. Hello, this is Tim in Spokane. You're very silly, all of you. You're very <laughs> silly. Tim? Yes. Will you respect the sanctity of this long-tested radio favorite, the secret yes. sound game? Yes, I will, sir. All right, my friend. Here you go. Here's the sound. What do you think for $500, what do you think it is? It's the sound of a toothbrush. Hitting the side of a porcelain sink. No, that's, that's absolutely wrong. However, thank oh, you. Oh, we're sorry. sorry. However, thank you for really making a guess. Thank you, Don and Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you know what? That stream of golf balls, we're not going to send them to Roger. We send them to you. There we go. The golf Great. balls. Thank you very much. Say Don and Mike show on them. Thank so you. You can find them when you lose them. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Hold on a second. Thank you. So we're just looking for a little I-E-S-P-E-C-T on our contest. And for what it's worth, every time Carrie's teeth hit the sink, I never have a microphone. <laughs> That's wise. <laughs> now you encourage them. Like that. That's the sound. That's when you knock out the upper plate. That's right. Boom. And now, <laughs> now down maybe, goes Carrie. Maybe, getting close to the weekend. Maybe she'll listen. Oh, my God. Down goes Carrie. Oh. We are. We will be right back with a Friday fix. This is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. I'm yeah, torn but... between two lovers. I don't know what to do. I'm trying, trying to, keep to keep her happy. Well, and, and Gelman saying, "Well, where are we?" <laughs> and there's too much whining going on. I can't <laughs> handle it. The Don and Mike Show. Zero tolerance for stupidity. Right, right. The Don and Mike right. Show. Here you go. Here are some stations that are airing our show right now. 96.7 WXZQ, Burlington, Vermont. One hundred point five, Mad City, WTLX, Madison, ninety five nine, ninety six Rock, Ocean City, Maryland, Love you, OC, WURP, Pittsburgh, Max, Max nine ten, Portland, Oregon, and as long as it's light outside, K I K K, Houston, Texas. Uh, does the show sound different, maybe more sophisticated to you today? New venue, perhaps. I'll tell you why. I'm wearing a tuxedo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Has the show sound happier to you? Yes. No, absolutely. Same crappy show as yesterday, <laughs> but I'm wearing a tuxedo. Going to Baltimore tonight for this thing with my wife, because I'm excited about this dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, invitation from... Art Modell. Now, we're not on in Cleveland, so I can say, without fear of people calling in, Art Modell is, is, is absolutely one of the guys in NFL history. Yeah. I mean, he's one of the men. He owned the Browns. He moved them to Baltimore. He became friends, acquaintances with this guy, David Modell, his son, and it's a party for his wedding to Michelle Modell, right. who, incidentally, I'm sure it's not a typo, but I've just noticed she spells her name like Michael. Mm -hmm. Someone should tell her that girls spell it with... 
Maybe her name is Michael. Some women have that for a first name. Maybe, Maybe. they got a break on the uh, invitations. What do you mean? Because of the misprint. I just said, let's go with it. No, I'm sure. But, I, and Buzz, yeah. I, there was a lady on. Who was the lady on the Walton? Michael Learned. Yeah, that's right. Baby. Big <laughs> baby. Ooh. Oh, anyway, I'm very excited going to this black tie event. I'm, I'm really not good at things like that. Um, discussing with my wife what we're going to see tomorrow night for movie night. I want to go see The Born Identity. Born um, Supremacy. Yeah, excuse me. Right. She is turned off by the fact that it's getting bad reviews. Got a good mm. review in USA Today. All right, well, maybe she's listening to that. That's what I want to see. Tomorrow night, we got people coming over for the barbecue on Sunday. We've got my, my sister-in-law and her kids coming over barbecue on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Monday night, we're going out with Buzz and Marsha for their 29th anniversary. That's right. So keep in mind, I'm very booked up here. If you want me, tonight, can't do it. Busy. Tomorrow, going to the movies with my wife. Busy. Uh, Sunday, we've got the sister-in-law coming over. Monday night, got Buzz's anniversary. Busy. Mike, reserve me a table at O'Mara's on Tuesday night, please. Amen. And Thanks. Look around, cafe. I know you are going to Boston this weekend, right? Yes, I am. To go, you know, you taking your, your daughters up there? No, no, going up with my girlfriend. We're going to go up and see the uh, Red Sox and the Yankees, and uh, I'm... Uh, I'll be prepared uh, to make some very significant statements about the status of the bet when I return on Monday. I will, uh, I'll will have some answers from, from you one way or the other. Now, without getting deep into this, right now it's eight and a half games plus the two that you added yep. mean ten and a half. If by some quirk of fate the Yankees sweep the Red Sox this weekend... Oh, that, that'll be definitely... If the, if the Yankees sweep the Red Sox this weekend, I will pay the bet off uh, on uh, Monday. Oh, we, we, now we, we'll... I mean, not Monday, but I will wait... Uh, you know, it, you know, well, you know what? I'm going to enjoy myself this weekend. Okay. I'm not going to. I'm not going to make that statement. I retract what I just said. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy it. I, I, it'll be bad enough for me if they sweep this weekend. Okay. okay. I'm not going to ruin it. Okay. But I will have a statement to make on Monday's show about the status of the bet. Okay. I will have a statement. I will have a I will statement. have a prepared statement. I will have a, I will I will be willing to like Kobe. I, I will, will have a prepared statement. I will be willing to have a press conference on uh <laughs> Okay, we'll do Monday's it on Monday. Show. Will you entertain questions? Yes. Mm, you'll have to talk to my press out of shake. Uh -huh. Who's that? About that. Isn't that me? That's George. Oh. <laughs> Joe Arden, Any questions can be handled by Joe. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, we'll figure that out on Monday. Now, as I mentioned uh, this morning, I'm watching the Regis and Kelly show, which is always a great show, always great every day. And uh, today they're at a beach. And it's the funniest thing because Regis is really, I'm not kidding for the show to tell you this, he's wearing... Just swimming trunks. <laughs> so it's time for the Friday favorite, and we've requested that he comes in in the same outfit. Started the show today with a red polo shirt and a red pair of swim trunks. And before you know it, Regis Philbin hey, and boy. How are you? Regis Philbin had taken his shirt off now, on that's TV. That's the way to do it, my friend. What, Regis? That's the way to do it. What are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. So I, I got to get the microphone. I forgot it's not television. Well, we do TV. It's uh, you know they uh, lavalier they strap thing? on yeah. what's called uh, a lavalier uh, <laughs> to, so you can hear. And I always get these radio things, even though I did radio back in the day. That's the way to do a show, my friend. What do you mean? Your tuxedo. That's oh. the way. You know, there was a day when all the performers, the greats like Dean and Dean. And, they, they, and, and Dean, Dean, and Dean, they they do that. But I came in fresh from Beach Week. What do you think of my uh, my lovely outfit? Here's the thing: I watched six hours of waxing I've gone through. I watched the Regis and Kelly Lee show today, and yeah, I, a sip of a uh, water here. Sure. I've I, I've got a little tickle. Help I love the throat. I, the, the throat. I love the show. I love day. my throat. I've had work done. <laughs> I used to have really a serious turkey problem, and I had it uh, nipped and tucked and stretched. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they've done, if you'll notice, I you know I'm 70 years old. Aren't you like 72? Sal, so, okay, what's a couple of years? <laughs> Do you want to put me in the box sooner than later? You're kidding me? No, but the deal is I've had uh, uh, re work done to uh, to stretch my neck over my throat so that uh, that I don't have these turkey gobble wobbles, and I'm very, very excited. Well, that's not it. even what I meant, but, but, but I'm glad to hear that. And I should point out to all of you listeners, yeah? Regis Philbin's a good guy, boy. And you know what he did, my friend? What? I'll tell you what I did, pal. What did I donated do? all of my old skin that was stretched out and cut out. Yeah. I donated that to burn victims. That was very what do you nice. think of that, huh? Was that over the top? No, 
Yeah, that was a good move. That was a good thing to do. So they take that there. Right now, there's uh, probably a lady in Queens that uh, you know had a house fire that's got a, a very normal looking arm thanks you're, to my throat skin. You're not uncomfortable at all being in here. I love having my shirt off. You know that. Huh. You know, for a man of my advanced years, I am very fond of my own body. And my trainer, uh, Radu, who has uh, has done such a great job with me. Oh, there we go. Oh, did you oh, bring really? your cell phone again? Yes, that's my cell phone. <laughs> Answer, Let me get it. Answer your cell phone, Regis. Yeah. I'm on. I made it down. I took the train. <laughs> this, this is Michael Gomez. The know. train that you were asked for. That was crowded. But he's, was, yeah. he's the guy who the produces the Regis and Kelly show. Yeah. yeah, I'll be back. Uh, Part of it, John. I think this is this interview is going to go to... They're in love. Yeah, but I'll be. I'll probably be able to get out of D.C. by 7.30. So. Get me up to... We'll do a late, a late <laughs> supper. Now, like you've done before. He you, just is married, you know. I can do that. Yeah. That'd be great. To a woman named Joy. Do you want to do... Oh, oh, okay. All right, then I'll leave on the train. A beard, apparently. You'll meet me at my apartment? You know, a lot of times, Joy will call in. Uh -huh. She's oh, upset at what she's heard. You got yeah. the painting of us? <laughs> oh, that good painting. Oh, that's fantastic. Just... The nude? Just... That's wonderful. Just... All right, We're... I'll come to your place. I'll probably get there 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Will you wear the robe? <laughs> wear the Japanese robe. <laughs> Yeah, we have the twist ties. Okay, we're on the air. Oh, I, I, I got to run. That, that's all the radio guys. So, hey, he's wearing a tuxedo. He looks good. <laughs> Let me hang up. Let me get off the phone with you. Goodbye. <laughs> Hi, how are you? That was uh, that was a, uh, one of my uh, one of my uh, production assistants. No, it was Michael Gelman. Uh, now, come on. Now, you're not going to go down that highway again, are you? I saw the caller ID. I may need to readjust my trunk. <laughs> Oh. Excuse me for just a second. Oh. I know that you're doing that occasionally. On All right, I admit, I always have to be honest on this show. You're a kookula. You're a crazy guy, <laughs> Don Geronimo. You always make me tell the truth. It was Michael Gilman, my producer, and love it. <laughs> Now, and he was, uh, he was now, talking to me. He's a great kid. See, the thing is, I love him. I love him, love him, love him. I know. You say that on this show. I love him. It's just how Without fail, man, Joy will call in at some point. Uh, Joy calls in occasionally just to check in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she likes to know my itinerary when I'm on the road. That's why we get the calls from from both of them. That's what we do. Oh. Excuse me, I have to call. <laughs> Anybody no, that's alive, I went down the wrong way. <laughs> Anybody that was watching that show today yes. had to do a, had to do a spit take. <laughs> yes. When you came out, took the shirt off, and then sat there during the part where you spin the wheel and asked the uh, dumb Dom house crowd. Dom DeLuise there, boy, he did spit takes. You ever watch DeLuise? Dom DeLuise? DeLuise was great. What a great time. He did Dean's show. Have you seen my infomercials for Dean? Dean Martin? You know, Dean Martin. I love Dean Martin. One of the great classy entertainers of all time. Would you mind putting your shirt on? No, I'd like to keep it off if you don't mind. I'll put it on if you wish. No, the, the choice is up to you. Richard. May I leave it open if I put it on? How about I leave it on button? We, we compromise, right? Yeah. Whatever you feel most comfortable. All right, I'm just going to put it on here, boy. There we go. Put the shirt back on. All set to go. I'm having a great today. time. You know who's got the funny pills? Who? That Foxworthy. That's a funny guy. That's a funny guy. He's like He reminds me of Dean's humor. But you know with that show where Dean used to come down the pole and they had the gold diggers? Oh, the gold diggers, And everybody yeah. was there in the funny and the, you know, they had hey, can he I worked with Frank and Don Adams. Let me ask you something. Great people, yes. Today when I'm watching the Regis show sure. on the beach and there's sure. your Kelly Ripper who's funny. Oh, yeah, well, it's appropriate she's at the beach. Funny? Well, why is that? Because they're fish at the beach. I'm not going to say any more. Oh. Uh, just another in the long line. They're all driving me nuts. They're driving me crazy. She's good, though. I oh, think for, she's good. Please. For a while, I was like uh, wishy-washy, whim-whammy on her. I didn't know whether to believe the press on her or not. I've only worked with one lady that I respect and admire. Who's that? Mrs. Green Thumbs. She's got true ability. Now, Ripper, my God, it's, you know, I'm this, me this, my sitcom this, you know, Faith and Love or whatever the hell it's called. And all that, you know, and me and my kids and walking through the park, seeing you on a stroller, all this, you know, oh, you were this, you were this. Yes, yeah, shut up. But just but for a second, let me talk about my life. Didn't you enjoy those sitting next to her? She's a cute girl. She's not. She's got a nice bikini on no, today, 9 o'clock in the morning on television. We call her Low Tide Ripper. <laughs> Shall I say more? I don't like any of them. They steal the spotlight from me. She made it indelibly clear to me when I, we had our first re, first week of shows yes. that we were not going to have relations. And it's been all downhill from oh. there. I said to Gelman, for the love of God, you know I'm by. Is there a chance that we could possibly get Ripper to admit to have relations with me? Like and did he said no categorically. Now, huh. did, did you have that deal with Kathy Lee Gifford early on before she discovered the Lord?
<laughs> it was a wonderful. In the early days of Kathy Lee, she tried. She knew the meaning of going the extra mile to get the gig. How did in the days seriously? Gifford was wonderful. Or Kathy Lee Epstein as I like to call her. She was fantastic. Did you did you ever so you And not like Ripper. She said no dice. Even the third base. That's all I want. In the morning in the makeup room. Hold on. Hello. Hello. Now, that's either going to be Michael or but, Joy. Yeah, I'm on the show. I'm doing a radio show. I got to run. I'm being interviewed. Yes. Oh, that's you got to. No, that's enjoy. no. I can't. No, no, no. <laughs> you, he's shirtless, incidentally. You said that. You said that I Regis Philbin. You made that plan, Mike. You didn't. No, you did not let me know that. He must be talking to Joy. What? What do I always say? Yeah, there you go. The magic words. The two magic words. Right. You got it. Bye. What are the two magic words? Who is that? That was Joy. What she want? She wanted to do what she always wants on a weekend night, and I told her the two magic words that she's memorized. And they are? Go yourself. Go yourself. Go without me. I don't want to be there. You know, but getting back to Kathy, hmm. uh, Kathy was just wonderful. And uh, third base all the time. Wow. Flowers of third base. You know, I bet he's Which jealous. Is what I enjoy. You know, why is that my I, favorite thing? You know, why I bet is jealous to hear that. Who would that be? Michael Gelman. Oh, for God's sakes, don't tell her. He's listening. I don't want to answer it. Will you take the call for me, please? I really don't want to talk to him, especially if it's him. Mm. Regis Philbin. Hello. I still hear the phone in the background. Uh, there, I got it. Hello, Regis' phone. It's Don. Please tell him if he heard it that you were joking, that I'm joking. He was joking. I'm a prankster. He was joking. He I'm was a kidding. prankster who loves to make pranks. He was kidding. Like Dean did. Uh-huh. A Dean show. Really? Nice, baby. Really? Right now? With who? <laughs> You're kidding me. You're kidding me. What? You, well, you know, this is a private conversation. Give me a second. Sure. But you know what they say. You know, once you have black, you never go back. What are you talking about? Oh, do I? Hey, get off the phone. No, I'm not, I'm not in What that. the hell's going on here? I, won't, I don't think you'd be jealous. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell him. I joke about anything except third base. I'll tell him. All right, I'll tell him you called. Okay, okay, bye. What the hell was that all about? He's upset that you talked about having relations with Kathy Lee Gifford. It was back in the old days. He knows all about it. And he wants to. Know, he wants you to know that right now he's in bed with pop star Usher. Not a chance. Yeah, that's it. And he said once he's had black, he's never going back. He's lying. He's oh. lying through his teeth. There's only one man for him, and it's me. You know that, and everybody does, he's including just, your listeners. He just told me that he's in the sack with Usher. Uh, that better not be true. Well, I have ways of finding out. I'll give him the Regis test when I get back to New York. <laughs> I lost two toenails in the sand at the Hamptons. Did I mention that to you? Wow. Is that just because you're old? It's because I'm old. I lose them all the time. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've only got three toenails left on on both of the feet. Wow. Three between two feet. Isn't that amazing? Sad. Hello, Hilden. <laughs> what is that about? I, he said that you were with some, uh, some rep star. Usher. Yeah, that kid we had on. <laughs> is he lying? Oh. No, that's not. You know, don't, don't, don't joke like that. I was talking about back. You remember the days, early days. Where I got to take a break. All right, go ahead. Have, have a private moment. You know, you remember back in the old days when I used to go to third base. With, <laughs> with Kathy Lee. It meant nothing. So much to work out. It meant nothing. It was something I did for fun. <laughs> hey, uh, I love you, too. <laughs> Michael, do me a favor. Will you try to find my nails? Find my nails. Find my nails, Michael. Producers right. work. I love Never you know. more than life itself. You know that? I love you. We got to take a break. I want you. We got to take a break. Oh, I'll, I'll be back. We have talk. to take a break. I'll be taking the Metro line. I'll see you. <gasps> you will. In just a, in ju in just a trench coat. Okay. Oh, I love you. Bye-bye. Oh, God. Regis. Boy of mine. We're going to play a love He's meeting me. We're going to play love at Jeopardy now. He's meeting me at Penn Station wearing just a trench coat. Phone oh, oh, number oh. is 877. And he found my nails. <laughs> We're going to glue them back on. <laughs> Make a, a lovely necklace for him. It'll be, no, no necklace. He'll glue them back onto the toes. Oh, onto your feet. It'll be fantastic, but no scratching. <laughs> That's how I lost them in the first place. 877-365-3636. We need two callers right now to play low-budget Jeff Hardy with Regis, who still has his shirt off from Beach Party Week. Oh, God, I love your tuxedo. We'll be right back. <laughs> I say, well, we'll be... Right back. I, I said it. Hit the button. I, Regis, I did there. Oh, my God. Is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> 
is the Don and Mike Show. All right, I just called two disc jockeys in, uh, I was just talking to two disc jockeys in Washington, D.C., Don and Mike, Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara, and it is snowing like crazy in Washington. That means it usually comes up the coast to us. They're saying by tomorrow. Well, it looked like snow today, and I said, you know, I better check the weather. So I checked the weather. Is that the end of it? Is that where you stop saying hello to us? Yeah, yeah that's when I go on to another so thing. Now in their 20th season, it's the Don and Mike Show. Damn it. What? No, 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 I don't want to talk about that. What, just, what, what's wrong, oh, Regis? Scabs. <laughs> scabs. God, I hate scabs. Oh, my God, is scabs. Do you remember back in the day when your show was, I can't stop scratching them, was not that popular and like, you would actually have to have phone conversations with morning DJs like uh, Mike and me and then, that was hell on earth, I don't mind telling And then you'd have to get on the air and like say, I was just talking to two disc jockeys yeah. from Washington, D.C. It was so totally forced, but uh, back then I was getting third base, so it didn't bother me uh, as much as it does now, as much as my scabs. And you, uh... Are still shirtless. Yes, yes, of course. I'll, I'll put it back on. I know you don't like that. Yeah, you look great right in a tuxedo. Whatever. Can I get you a red carnation for that outfit? Whatever floats your boat. Because it was beach week on your show. Let beach me just week. Yes, sir. We're at the beach. One question before we start the game. Sure. Uh, you can. Uh, 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 uh. You've had a. You've had a lot of time with both of them. Jesus. What? My nipple's gone. Oh no. Really? Fell off. Where is it? Wait a minute. It was around the beach or? Did it fall in your pocket? Hold on. Oh, no, it couldn't fall in your pocket. You don't have a shirt on. There it is. Oh. I'll have to get Gilman to glue it back on. <laughs> when you worked with him, now that you've had some time with both of them, yes. who's your favorite, Kathy Lee or Kelly Lee? I don't like either one of them. But if you had I dislike both of them equally. But what if you had to pick one of them? If I had to pick one of them, I would send both of them packing and do the show with Mike. With he Michael understands Gilman. my humor, my rhythms. He understands my rhythms. Yeah. More than anybody understands. Uh, Regis Plus play Low Budget Jeopardy. This is Low Budget Jeopardy. Now entering the studio is a painting contractor from uh, Roy, Utah. Let's say hi to Sean Fielding. Hey, Sean. Hey. You must be listening on our Salt Lake City Station KALL, right? Absolutely. Got you, my friend. And now entering the studio is a student from Fort Washington, Virginia, or Maryland, or wherever it is. He's uh, Jamal Kaufman. How's it going, LQ and Regis? Now, Jamal, you're on WJFK, right? Yep. Gotcha. Hold on, let me make sure I didn't lose. You know what? Ay, ay, ay. I think I screwed something up here. I think I accidentally hung up on Sean from... Sean, are you there? Utah. Hold, hold on there, Jamal. Yeah, okay, we'll get him back on the line. Get him back on the air. We'll get him back on the line. And now entering the studios, the host of Low Budget Jeopardy. Remember, uh, Sean and Jamal, uh, don't oh, screw no. uh, uh, with Lord Quizmaster. Right. And welcome... Uh, the uh, welcome, Alex Trebek Geronimo. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Regis. Thank you. That's um, the outfit, boy. Uh, let's see now. Let's. Oh, oh, the tuxedo. Yeah, I got. I go love to... a good tuxedo. I got to. A, I got to go to a thing tonight. I, I was lucky enough to be invited to. Are you? Familiar? I think everybody in entertainment ought to wear tuxedos on radio or not. Are you familiar hmm. with the uh, Modell family? The uh, family that owns the. Art and Patty. Yeah, I know Art and Patty Modell. <laughs> They're well, good people. You know their son David. Ah, uh, David Modell. Yeah, uh, and his wife Michelle. <laughs> Yeah, and they're great people. Do you know how she spells her name? Well, how? Uh, she spells it like Michael. <laughs> she does. Of course she does. They're good people. Will you and give them my best? I will. I got into, invited to a party there tonight. I know, Art Modell, uh, back from uh, the days when he used to party with me and Dean. Uh, Sean, are you there? I am here. All right, sorry about that, Sean. That was operator error. So we had <laughs> Sean in Utah. Well, then here we go. Jamal in Maryland, and here are your categories, guys. Fine. Categories are... Name the year. The year. Oh, I could do that. I could do that for many years. <laughs> All about Mr. Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell, who's he? <laughs> NFL free agents, etc. Ah, the gridiron. There you go, baby. Celebrities, favorite vegetables. All right. Oh, that's okay. It's not a retarded category. I mean, it's not about tards. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you call a retarded person a vegetable. Oh, that's not nice. No. What are you trying to do to me? And my career? <laughs> and new on DVD. DVDs of the uh, movie machines. That's right. We just, <laughs> so we have, we have Name the Year, All About Colin Farrell, Wonderful. NFL Free Agents, etc., My Favorite Vegetable, New on DVD, and Sean, we'll start with you. Well, then, fine. Uh, I will take uh, Colin Farrell. All right. Uh, Colin Farrell, for one, uh, his current age. 
What is 32? Negative. Jamal, it's your chance to steal. What is 31? No. Alan Farrell, 28. 28 is a youngster. Uh, Sean, you're in control. Sean, pick another one. Come on, Sean. I will take uh, NFL free agent. No, Sean. Sean yeah, How about we go to Jamal, the man who wants Jamal, it's your chance. It's Colin Farrell for two. There Colin you go. Farrell Thank you. Two. Thank you. <laughs> he is not related to this comedic genius. Who is Will Farrell? Yeah, $2 for you. Do you like Anchorman, Regis? I loved it. Anchorman was great. Ron Burgundy. <laughs> and finally, here we go, Jamal, for three. Uh, Colin uh, Farrell really got noticed in this piece of crap movie that starred Bruce Willis. Ooh, what is Tears of Die? Sean, your chance to steal. Uh, what is Die Hard? No. Nope, it was awful. It was a movie called Hearts War. Mm. Hearts War, where they were in a prison camp. Correct. A fabulous flip. What do you mean it was terrible? I loved it. I cried. Uh, Jamal, you're in control. Uh, NFL free agents, etc. All right, here we go. Uh, Carol Owens was with San Francisco. Now with... Who are the Eagles? Right. What's the dollar value? Uno. One dollar for you, Jamal. Uh, for two. Vinny Testaverde was with the New York Jets. Now with... Who are the Cowboys? Right. Two dollars. You're really doing well with this category. Now Corey... Corey Dillon was with Cincinnati Bengals. Now he is with... Who are the Patriots? Right. Three dollars. You've run the category. You know your football, baby. Oh, man, you are, Jamal. That's great. Um, I'll go with new on DVD. New on DVD. Okay, uh, new this week. Uh, stars Ben Stiller. What is Starsky and Hutch? Wow. One dollar for Jamal. Like a buzzsaw. For two. Stars, stars Lindsay Lohan. Oh... Uh, <laughs> Sean, your chance to steal. I have no idea. You know, normally I mock, but I say good for both of you. Yeah. For, for not knowing confessions of a teenage drama queen. <laughs> I don't understand what she's got. I, well, I understand what she's got. She's got the same thing that Jane Russell had. <laughs> big ones. Really big, huge ones. All right, Jamal, you're in control. For three. For three, new on Divid for three. This poorly viewed HBO series has had its only series out on DVD this week. What is Six Feet Under? No. no Sean, Sean, poorly viewed. You don't have any dollars, Sean, your chance to steal. It's going to stay that way. <laughs> no, I, get the feeling someone's, I get the feeling someone's trying to Google this. Um, <laughs> the answer is that awful show called K Street. K Street. Oh. K Street. Yeah, that's with uh, Carville and the Matlin. You know, a, a show well, that... Both, they both look like they ought to be underground. You know a show that you and Michael could star on? Which one? The show called KY Street. <laughs> KY Street. <laughs> We've been approached to be on that uh, Showtime program. <laughs> we spoke. Yeah, wow. we turned it down. Good for you. All right, Jamal. Uh, name the year for one. Name the year for one. Um, the year, we had this on the show yesterday, a guy who works uh, at the station on, on the uh, hideout show. The year that J-Dubs put on his tattoo, when the Detroit Lions will win a Super Bowl. Um, what is 2005? There you what go. What was the dollar value? Uno. One dollar. Go again, Jamal. For two. For two, the year The Sopranos will return with new episodes on HBO. What is 2006? Right, we had that on the show today. Two dollars for Jamal. You're just a buzz song. For three? Killing okay, me. yeah, he's killing, killing you. Number one, <laughs> number one song in 1969 by Zager and Evans. I'm 22 years old. Sean, you just have to stay. No excuse. I was three years old. In 1969, on this day, number one song was In the Year 2525. Oh, that was a good one, but it was a little too rocky. All right, uh, Jamal. Jamal, you're in control. Uh, celebrity veggies. My favorite vegetable. Courtesy of Us Weekly, uh, where they asked celebrities their favorite vegetables. Uh, Tom Cruise. What are pickles? Sean, good answer, Jamal. Sean, your chance to steal. What is broccoli? Yeah. Wow. Y'all going to go to the final round. Sean, you <laughs> saved yourself with that. Select Sweet. again. Sweet. Uh, same category for two. Favorite vegetable uh, from Us Weekly, Denzel Washington. What are carrots? No. Jamal, your chance to steal. <laughs> What are radishes? Radishes? <laughs> Jesus. Corn. Denzel likes corn. I like corn, too. So do I. And you know what? I, I could do an hour on corn. I, so could I. I had it the other night. My wife made it for me, uh, corn on the cob. Mm. Here's the problem with corn. Mm. 
I'd like to know the nutritional value because it seems to me that about 50% of it goes away. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had Michael Gilman's corn chowder? <laughs> okay, let's go with the, the final question on the big Who's board. Who's in control? It's Jamal, I think. Jamal's Jamal. the other guy. Uh, Sean, you're Sean. in control. Final. Uh, Sean, favorite vegetable of Sarah Jessica Parker? Uh, what is that on line one? Jamal, your chance to steal. What are cucumbers? No. Now, the funny answer would have been Matthew Broderick, but no, it's <laughs> squash, in particular, pumpkin squash. And that's the end of the first round of Low Budget Jeopardy. And, and that's it. Now, who's got one as we go to the finals here? Sean limps into the final round with a total of $1. Meanwhile, Jamal has $12. He's got quite a lead. All right, guys, anything can happen in final Low Budget Jeopardy. We physically force you both to bet it all. Uh, good luck. Uh, this is Celebrities Where They Started. You're going to have to name this celebrity, name this singer, to break into show business when he was five. This singer auditioned to be a mascot at a high school dance by performing the song Islands in the Stream. Wow. Ooh. Now, I'll give you a... That's a loaded one, baby. I'll give you a hint on this. He's, he's not a fagala. He sure is popular with with the fagolas. Ah, oh, you like that. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, you got me stewing on it. And, and, dare I say, no, you know what? Mm -mm. You're not going to give that one? Mm -mm. No. Let me just say, he is super popular. Wonderful. That's all I want to say. Good luck and answer in the form of a question. All contestants on Love of Jeopardy will receive selections from the Regis Philbin skin thickening line. Hi, folks. This is Regis Philbin. You know, about ten years ago, my skin began to thin. And in certain places, it was almost transparent. Then I hooked up with some cosmetics experts who provided me with the same skin thickening creams used by Barbara Walters. And bingo! My skin is thick. Very, very thick. Just like when I was 60. So if you can look right through your arms and see your muscles, then this is for you. Now back to final low budget Jeopardy with Alex Trebek. Thank you, Regis. All right, here we go. Uh, Sean in uh, Utah. Yeah, first. Sean uh, in Utah. Sean, now, uh, th this is a, he's a young performer who, <laughs> excuse me, to break into showbiz when he was five. I've got a lozenge. He auditioned to be a mascot as a high school dance by performing the song Islands in the Stream. Uh, who is uh, Justin Timberlake? Mm. I'm sorry, Sean, that uh, knocks you uh, down to zero. Good guess, but no wrong. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Jamal, my man, if you have the right answer, you're the winner. Who is Nick Lachey? No, fellas. No, I'm terribly sorry. It's Clay Aiken. Oh, wonderful. Clay Aiken. It's a great talent. It's Clay Aiken. That's a good boy. <laughs> North Carolina boy. Uh, yeah, his first job in showbiz, auditioned to be a mascot as a high school dance. At a high school dance, he performed Islands in the Stream. Michael and I have an autographed picture of him. <laughs> I think Clay Aiken's an older version of Jingle Boy back in the day. Jingle Boy. Jingle Boy. Remember him, Regis? Yes, I do. Fantastic. I've listened to your show for years. <laughs> Listen, uh, Sean and Jamal, it's a type of game Alan Lime wants. Yeah, Alan, that man will love. Because we're giving away no money, so don't go in mad. Just go away. Here's Regis to tell you what. First of all, you've got Sean. On Fielding of Utah, you won a Donna Mike Show prize pack. It's swag beyond your wildest dreams with a collection of wonderful gifts from the Donna Mike Show. And for you, Jamal Cotman of Port Washington, you've won two free seats for yes at the Nissan Pavilion Wednesday, August 25th. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster locations and online at NissanPavilion.com. All right, uh, Jamal, Sean, thank you, fellas. Hey, can I say one thing before I go? Sure. Friday's here. Let's have a beer. That's right. I love that. That's your boy, Ottinger. <laughs> Joe. Yeah. We can't see you. Have a, have a bottle of beer. You like him, huh? I think he's fabulous. <laughs> All right, I like him an awful lot. <laughs> how much do you like him? A whole bunch. The way a man would. <laughs> I don't know, I'd like to have him out to my country home. Uh, listen, Sean and Jamal, thank you uh, both for listening. Do, do you think it's a wise idea that you mention that? Why is that? Well, only because I know that there's somebody out there listening who's very jealous. Well, I don't mean anything by it. I meant it that I like the work he does. Oh, for the love of me. Let me just get that very quick. It's your cell phone again. Hello. Hello. How are you? Sorry, I picked it up, but I spoke into the wrong end. How are you, Michael? I have to take this up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to. Oh, ho. I didn't mean anything, but he's the guy that works on this show. No, he's not that cute. You're the cutest. You're my cutie, Patootie. 
You know that all I do, all I will. You know what I'll do? I'll rub your toes. Oh, in a world where rub your toes, the radio like was strictly forbidden, no, one man found toes. a way to bring the good news like to his people. Pause. Yeah, I'll spit between you. Oh. oh. I buzz. Oh. You know, we can hear all that, Regis. Why don't you hang up with him? Uh, you were talking about spitting between his toes. Very upset. I got Hang it. up on it. Okay, I love you. Goodbye. Uh, uh, oh. Buzz, what's your lead story on news and comments today? Today, we begin with an oil company profit report. Say, those pennies a gallon really add up. <laughs> You're not kidding, missile, Mr. Muscle Man. <laughs> Did somebody say pellet? Pennies? Uh-huh. Pennies? Pennies? A gallon FM. That's your general manager. That's, oh, hi, Regis. Hi, how are you? Hi there. Stay tuned. For news and comments comment coming, coming up, up on the Don and Don Show. Show. And Regis, that was very... Well, that was fine. A oh, professional. I gotta go. Goodbye, Mama. This is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> hey, that computer worked pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Rob is uh, just left to go uh, join uh, his family to see his daughter in a play tonight. Oh, mm-hmm. And uh, that's great. Uh, the computer, though, has given us some free time. Joe, how you doing? Hello, Joe. Weekend's here. Have a can of beer. Yeah, we're smooth, baby. This is the Don and Mike Show. Okay, we are smoother than Michael Jackson. Yeah. Give me a moment here. A little Friday music. Huh? When you're alone and life is making you lonely, <laughs> you can always go. <laughs> Where? Downtown. Hey, Jerry. When you've got worries, all the noise in the hurry seems to help. I know. Jerry, Devon. Downtown. Yeah. Listen to the music of the traffic in the city. Happy Friday. Girl on the sidewalk where the neon signs are pretty. Happy again. So maybe I'll see you there. We can forget all our troubles. Forget all our cares. Yeah. Downtown. No final place for me. Jerry Todd. The Petula Clark song. Get background singers. That's Jerry Todd. That's it, the great Jerry Todd. Video from Tom Monroe and his tribute to life in the big city. Downtown's the place to be. From Tom's disc entitled Tom and Rose Sings Petula Clark. The Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Petula. Right, right. Oh. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? Is it the Don and Mike Show? You bet. Uh, thank you, Dude Walker. Time for Buzz's News and Comment now. Buzz brought to you by Veramax. Oh, Ride, Captain Ride. Veramax, world's number one sexual pleasure performance and answer. Number one, does it really work? Someone call for a doctor? Doctor developed it. Clinically tested. Uh, patented, too. Veramax, get it. Retailers nationwide. Call one 888 try max You know who loves Veramax? Who's that, Jerry Todd? Jerry Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Buzz. Hi, Donna Mike. Well, while we've all been paying more for gasoline this summer, the oil companies have been telling us that it's really not much better for them that... Honestly, they only make a few pennies a gallon on the stuff. Right. Hey, it's Yowlin FM. Did somebody say pennies? They don't make any money. Well, as Al knows, FM. As Al knows, those pennies really add up. Sunoco is the first company to release a profit report since the higher prices hit, and that report says profits are up. Well, okay, profits have tripled. <laughs> oh, God! Tripled. In the second quarter of this year, Sunoco made $234 million compared to the $81 million they made in the second quarter last year when you were paying less for gasoline. You know, I don't track it all the time, but I notice when it goes over 2 bucks, right. And I know that right before vacation, sure. before the 4th of July, at least where I live, it it's was, spice. It was uh, up, but then it got down to... One ninety one yeah. after the after the holiday. Looked hopeful. Today when I went to fill up, yeah. I didn't even look. Two nineteen. Yeah. And and, and and as as Buzz is reporting, they, right. they just 
I mean, tripled their profits. Whatever the market will bear. <laughs> Speaking of the market, for the first time in two months, the stock market closed below 10,000 today. The dropped uh, the Dow dropped 88 points. Wow. wow, that's not a good sign. That's always like the barometer that I use. Over 10,000 means we're okay. Right. Under mm -hmm. 10,000 means... What's all the stuff we were supposed to do uh, after 9-11? Oh, get duct tape. Right. Get, yes. Get lots of the plastic stuff to mm -hmm. put on your windows. That's time to mark it up. Scary time. Right. Now it's down again. Uh, the other day, uh, you guys, Don and Mike, were saying that uh, Martha Stewart should step up, do her time, and get it over with. Yeah. Uh, you guys said that if she did that, she could be home for the holidays. Those exact words are now coming to the New York Post from a source close to Martha. Martha, baby, are you finally listening to me with all the bad press you're getting? She is. Who came out here the day after and said you got some stones on you? I love Martha Stewart. The public really didn't like do. that too much, though. I really admire her. She's a bitch. You know, here's the thing. If she was a man, mm -hmm. we'd be holding her up and saying, look at this. Or, or even even better... If she was somebody really evil, mm -hmm. like someone I held in greatest thing, like John Gotti, mm -hmm. it would be, hey, look at how the great John Gotti has manipulated this again. Mm -hmm. He's come out of court. He's not bothered by the cops. He's saying he's still going to have his fireworks show in the Bronx. Yeah, but look what happened to John Gotti. All right, so that was a bad example. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, but still, Martha should just say, while, while saying all the other stuff, like she wants to keep her company going, she should just say, listen, okay, I want to get this over with. Well, the truth is, the friend says Martha still wants to appeal her conviction and clear her name, but that she'd rather wait for that while doing some time. Martha's reportedly insisting that she go to prison now. But quoting the source, there's no availability right now at Danbury, and that's where she wants to go. It's a, what is it? A hotel? It's full. There's no room at the inn because it's the it's the, the it's nice Dan, one. It's Danbury. Right. Yeah. yeah. See, and that and, Danbury. And, we know someone who went to Danbury. Yes, yeah, we do. Yeah. And then, and then you wonder, okay, if it's if it's exactly five months, if she went in today, she'd get out on uh, December twenty second. Well, if, if Danbury's full, why doesn't she look to some other place like maybe Leavenworth? <laughs> Hey, hey, come on. I like Martha. I hate Martha. I like her. As much as you like her, I hate her. I want to tell you something. If she was a man, we'd be sitting here saying how great she is. And no, how... if she was a man, I'd be saying she uh, you know, she had more money than Jesus and she still tried to cheat. And if she was a man, we'd say he tried to cheat, he got caught, he's going to do his little bit of time. But isn't it great that he's got the co cojones to stand up and say, hey, I'll take it, I'll do it, don't worry about it. I just didn't like her be yeah, way, way. Way, way back when. So I mean, it's, did not, I. it's not like this is new to me. But, but you know, it is all new to me. <laughs> it really is new it's to me. It's fresh. It's a good thing. It's new to me. <laughs> yeah, way to go, Martha. Yeah, get in there and knock out some of that time. You know, and do what Sean Connery says in that movie with Matthew Broderick. You know, where he has to go to jail. You mean the, the family business? Yeah, the, the one with Dustin Hoffman. Right, right. He says, you know, the first time you get, you go in jail, you pick out the biggest guy. You right. beat the hell out of him. That's the guy you knock out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, we were asking uh, that uh, jail expert about whether she was going to, she said, I really don't think so. And then somebody called who worked in a yeah. prison and said, said somebody yeah. will, like, light her up or something. Yeah, that was exactly <laughs> what her was. out, whatever the expression was. Yeah, right. I don't know why she's so e eager to do the jail time. <laughs> yeah, interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. Nicole Kidman has, all right, I'm back with you. Let me start that over again. Start like over again. This story that I just, when I said Nicole Kidman, forget I said that. Oh, I can't. You've already said it. Well, I'll say it again, but uh, let me say it a new way. Okay. Uh, Michael okay. Jackson. Nicole Kidman. Matt has Michael asked. Kidman, I, Michael Kidman. Nicole Jackson. Michael, Michael Kidman. Michael Jackson. Nicole Kidman. Has asked Nicole Kidman to accompany him to the MTV Music Awards. Uh -huh. She says he's been begging her for dates lately, even as he faces child molestation charges. Hi, N uh, Nicole. I know you're not together with Tom, and I know you like effeminate men. <laughs> and I'm wondering if there's a chance you could go. This you should not do. You should not say he's an animal. He's a. Should not say he's jacko. I'm not a jacko. Jacko. N Nicole, you don't want to go with me because they call me Janko. <laughs> Nicole, what Nicole? Shut up. Okay. <laughs> there she is. Nicole told a radio show in her native Australia, "quote There was a call from his people to mine asking if he could take me to the awards. I had never even met him. It was a little strange. I did decline." She Nicole, goes, "Nicole, <laughs> isn't Tito Jackson there? Call him for my brother Michael. Hello." Um, I respect, she talks like that. Really. I respectfully decline. N Nicole goes on. I keep thinking of those ridiculous photographs of Michael in a wig at Disneyland. Call me crazy, but it just didn't tempt me so, to accept. So he calls her without even knowing her. Right. 
Oh, my God, he's whacked. Yeah, maybe he's a little. He's wacko jackal. <laughs> hey, look, Nicole, you don't know me, none. This am Jermaine Jackson. <laughs> I'm calling for my brother, Michael, yes. who has recently may have had quintuplets. It's for quadruplets. 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 <laughs> Thank you, my people. <laughs> you got a call from my people. Now everybody shut up and listen to this stupid story. Some dumb new study that's probably flawed says not getting enough sex can make a man grumpy at work. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's your point, Buzz? We're getting some kind of interference here, Buzz. I can't really help. Uh, this is a test of the emergency Buzz's right system. <laughs> having, having trouble hearing him. <laughs> Seriously, though, the research says that two out of five men reported increased stress at work during a dry spell. Again, we're getting that interference, Buzz. Compared to just one in ten women. Many women said shopping, talking with a friend, or having a drink are the best stress relievers. <laughs> Somebody's getting very excited about this story. Very agitated, I should say. But the vast majority of men listed sex as numero uno for stress. You mean not having it? Winner. Uh, yeah, well, no, having it is the best relief for stress at work. Stress relief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here all week. Which is only about 30 more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and movies can put us more in the mood for love, according to another study. Oh, yeah. The mainstream movies, not just the adult variety. Oh, I thought those kind of movies. But good luck finding a movie to help you both. The U.S. study says romantic movies put women in the mood and cause men's testosterone levels to now, fall. I know this is obscure, mm -hmm. but a movie that always turns me on and makes me want to jump my wife's bones, if yeah. I can still say that. Right. You ever seen Clifford starring Charles Grodin? <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm, a, I'm calling a doctor now, right now. Mike, come on. I am calling on, a come psychiatrist on, you know that is? right now. Al, that is Friday funny. <laughs> come on, that's funny. You've seen that movie where they have the big oversized chairs? Clifford. Clifford and Charles Grodin is dressed as... as or, or no, Martin Short. Martin Short is, is Clifford. Yeah, Martin Short is dressed as the kid with the knee socks. And the He's the evil kid, kid right? Yeah, and Charles Grodin is the guy that has to watch him. It's on Showtime like once a year. And you go out of your mind when you watch that. Do I? They, they said with a movie like Bridges, Do I? Bridges of Madison County, for example, uh, progesterone levels, that's the female hormone, actually increase in both men and women by about 10%. I was kidding. But the, the movie that really turns me on yeah. is that one that Joe brought in. Uh -huh. Remember we watched Sex Education for Trainables? Uh, yeah. For me, it's always the same one. Been the same one. It's my aphrodisiac. What's that? <laughs> Disorderlies. <laughs> well, Mike, come on. you got to do it the right way. Rated PG. <laughs> Disorderlies. <laughs> <laughs> this study also says that action movies can boost a man's testosterone level by as much as 30%. That's really your favorite genre. They say, you like the action movies. God Godfather Ooh. Part 2 increased men's testosterone and put them more oh, in the mood for love. I agree with yeah. that. Oh, you know, I you know, have it weird. I really do agree with mm -hmm. that. I was having a really good discussion with this guy that lives down the street from me about... Uh, he said, do you agree or not agree that the greatest sequel ever made was The Godfather Part Absolutely. 2? Without, without, and and without. I said, well, maybe, you know, the Part 3 was better. But yeah, generally speaking, yeah. yeah. Godfather 2 would be half the one you'd have to say was better than the first. Mm -hmm. Godfather now, Part 2 was the definitive Godfather. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. And I know you can't compare the movies because they're totally different. But I said to the guy, and I feel this way, I think Spider-Man 2 is a better movie than Spider-Man. Uh, unquestionably. I mean, by the, people, by, I mean really, yeah, significantly so, better. So who would think that you would ever put The Godfather Part 2 and Spider-Man Part 2 in the same category, but you'd have to say... Well, you're talking both, about sequels that are better both, than the original. Both sequels that didn't suck. Mm -hmm. Both sequels that didn't suck. And then, as far as comedies, Caddyshack 2. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you suck the poison out, Mike. <laughs> Not surprisingly, in the study, a documentary about the Amazon rainforest had no effect on either men or women, romantically speaking. Quoting a researcher, this is interesting. When you're watching movies, your hormones are responding, not just your mind. And quoting him, if you want to learn about someone's personality, look at their video collection. Really? How do you make a hormone? How? I don't know. Don't pay her. Bada bing! <laughs> uh, 56 year old. Or, Rob, in case you're listening, I'm sorry. Kicker. Yeah, of course. That's always Rob's favorite. I'm right here. Oh. Rob Speedwack. You hear that? Yeah. I, heard it. I heard him laughing. He's laughing. 56-year-old <laughs> John Corson of Madison, Maine, says he feels better. And of course, if Rob was here, he would say something about it. He'd be better if she's pregnant. 
Speaking of Rob Spiewak, you miss your buddy, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Me, I got to think of all these things on my own. He's, he's going to his kids' play, right? Yes, right. he is. That's, That's the nice. only way he could get out of this tonight. That's right. It's the only way. Gary, stay for another hour or two. <laughs> oh, Up in Maine, John Corson says he feels better ever since he got hit by lightning. John says he feels lighter and 100 years younger. <laughs> Quoting him, it's... I a, feel... I feel lighter, and you feel... <laughs> and I feel... 100 pounds... Years. Lighter, there. Well, 100 years older. <laughs> younger. What? I feel... Uh, let me do it again. Okay. okay. I feel... Lighter... You, you feel... Lighter. Lighter. Uh, lighter. Um, and... One hundred times funnier. <laughs> you know who you kind of sound like now? Who? Jay Dubs. Jay Dubs. Oh, yeah. I feel. I'm Jay Dubs. Quoting Lightning Boy, it's the best I have felt as far as energy in ten years. John was working in the yard. An afternoon thunderstorm rolled through, so he went inside and only came out again when he thought the storm was over. Then it hit him. Quoting again, it was whitish blue. It was so bright. I heard the snap. I was paralyzed. My whole body was vibrating. It was a hell of a sensation. It was like chest pain with someone's hand on my chest. Other than some redness on his shoulders, doctors haven't found anything wrong with John. About 50 people a year in this country get killed by lightning. I could still do the hideout show. <laughs> and uh, joining us now, I think yeah. on I-66, wanting to jump in on the fun, what would be... How do you make a hormone and everything else here is... That's that's a Donnie tradition. Robbie, Robbie speed bump. Hey, Rob. Hey, how are you doing? Ah, you got me. Oh, you got me with that. Hey, hi, Tommy. Hey, guys. What's happening? What do you got planned this weekend, Tom? I'm going out to... Hey. Van Dyke Park for a picnic party. Oh, really? You going to have egg salad? Uh, no. I don't know what's going to go on. Oh, dear. Rain or shine, I'm... Going to what does rain or shine mean, Tom? Uh, rain or shine means the what? sun comes out and it rains. <laughs> and it rains. How do you I spell mean. rain? R A I N. Hey, Very hey close. now hold on. It's Friday. How about sun? S U N. There you go. Oh, right. How about Friday? F I R D Y. Yes, Friday. <laughs> Ever been hit by lightning, Tom? <laughs> nope. There's okay. my guy. How do you spell Rob? Rob, yeah. R-O-B. R-O-B, And, Tom, how do you make egg salad? Egg salad with eggs. Very good. Yeah. How and, do you... and where's Charlie at today? He's, he's right here. He's hey, right Charlie. Here. Hi, Tom. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> Hi, Tom. <laughs> la, la, la. La, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Gavin. What? Friday. What? Friday. What? La, la, la. What? La, Watch it! Watch it! <laughs> ah, eat paint! Hey! <laughs> hey! You know what? What? Let, that damn taste! It looks good! What tastes good? What, Tom? That damn. That damn. That damn taste? What? That damn looks pretty good on the website. Oh. Oh, is that damn on the website? No. Oh. What website you on, Tom? The, uh, www. www. WJFK.com. Oh, very good. I'll, I'll check that out. That's good. And you, you, you like her, Tom? Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'd like, you... like to take her out on a date. Yeah. Have you looked at that picture a lot, Tom? Yes. Yeah, and? I miss the old days sometimes. So do I. Yeah. We, still, we still, you know, do What would you like to do on a date? Uh, take her out to the movies. Uh huh. Would you, nice. like, would you like to kiss her? Yes. Really? What movie would you take her to? Uh. Friday, Friday the 13th, part two. That's, That's a good one. That's, a, That's a good one. always an excellent choice, Tom. Would you want to kiss Beth Ann? Yes, I do. <laughs> how, do you spell, how do you spell Beth Ann? B-A-T-H-A-N-N. -N. Right. Beth Ann. Would you, like, would you like to take a bath with Beth Ann? Yes. Really? Would you get nice and clean? Yes. What else? Massage. Uh -huh. A massage? Yes. Would that be fun for you? Yes, it will. Would you like to be on the receiving end or the giving end? The receiving end. So you'd like to get a massage. You're going to get a massage soon here. Yeah. Let's spell massage. Massage. M-A-S-S-C-A-R-E-N. Mascarn. You know, he had me going. He had the M-A-S-S. He had the M-A-S-S. All right, listen, Tom, we got to go. Have a great weekend, buddy. 
Guess what, guys? What, Tom? September 20th. What's that? I'm going under the knife. Oh, really? Really? For what? <laughs> Brain surgery? My, to get my uh, replacement hip. Oh, you're getting a hip replacement. Oh, good. Yes, I am. Hip. And you guys are invited to come over to the Fairfax Hospital and do your live Oh, yeah. Broadcast live. Oh, love broadcast live hospital. when you get your hip replacement surgery. I'd love to. Yep. Tom, roar like a monster. <laughs> Very good. Tom. All right. Bye, Tom. And guys, you can go to my website, tomgavin.com, and, right. and buy T-shirts tomorrow. Okay. Uh, All right. At Van Dyke Park. <laughs> okay. Bye, Tom. Hey, hey Buzz. Rainer yes, Tommy. Tommy. Go to the knees, buddy. Thank you. Bye-bye. There goes Tom. You know, there's a new show on FX with Dennis Leary called Rescue Me, and he plays and a character name named is Tommy Gavin. Gavin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Because we got a break. Yes. What's, uh, what's next on your news and comment show? If death calls your cell phone, don't answer. Yee. Oh, let me check. Is Frida called recently? <laughs> <laughs> joke. It's a joke. I'm going it's out with a woman. It's, it's, it's I'm, going out, I'm going out with a woman. She should be here any minute. Um... Let me. See. That's the sound of her arriving. Let me see where she's at. Let me see if my son ended up taking her, or if she had to, in yeah. fact, take a cab. I think we found out it would be a cab. Yeah, that's what we, she said earlier on the show. Hello? Hello. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi. Where are you? Uh, I'm in traffic. It's you know the cab didn't show. So how how are you getting here? Driving. You what? Driving. 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 Well, why don't you? Well, then why don't you just go to a place and I'll meet you there? I don't feel like going all the way to the place by myself. I told you that. No, I don't feel like coming all the way back to get your car tonight. You don't have to. I don't have to. Don't get mad at me. Don't yell at me. Don't or don't car. yell at me. Well, I'll do whatever you want. No, you don't have to do anything. No I'll, one has to do anything. She sounds like she's driving to the radio station. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're driving here. Oh. She just hung up. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. So things are great. <laughs> So things are great. We'll have a good time at this party tonight. I'm glad I got rid of the tuxedo for you. Yes. Okay. Um, so you thought you were going to have to go back. No, she's on the way. I think okay. she's driving herself. So she's on her way. Right. See, I thought I was going to... Okay, so she's coming here. Yeah. Yes. That's what it sounds like. I think that we lost the connection at one point. No, I think she hung up. I don't know if that happened. Uh, it sounded to me like a hang-up. I think I knew the difference. For was a very thing. long ring there. Now, she's turned into... She wouldn't turn it on to voicemail right away. Let's see where she at. You oh, knew I was coming there. I did not know you. No, I don't think you did. Where I did not. Where are you driving to? Because I said I'm coming there, and you said, why don't you just drive to the party by yourself? So where, where would mm, I be? No, maybe you're right. Yeah, I guess I did yeah, think you were you coming knew there. It. Right. Yeah. So. Okay, so we'll have two cars at the radio station. We'll have a car at the radio station I'll over the weekend. I'll say the 100th time, don't worry about it. I have friends that will help me. I don't need my family to help me. Baby, I'll do anything you want. I what, no. No, you. Uh, when you thought you would have to help me retrieve my car again, you know you're gonna you're gonna whine about it. No, you I did. Uh, well, uh, I'm not, that hey, whine. Back tape, sugar. Here are your response. Okay. Okay. Yeah, fine. I'm on your side. <laughs> oh. oh boy, Hello. Denise, <laughs> honey. Honey, I have some bad news. I guess. You are not coming in to work in the morning. Just What? Yeah, you, I feel this way. No, but you don't... Would you just... Would you just... Me, would you just... Give me... Just give me a... Just give me a... You're not... Give me a... Just give me a... Goodbye. Mm. Ouch. <laughs> Thanks for trying to help me, Mike. No, I knew I knew all along. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I thought you mean you knew she was driving over here. Yeah, and what that means is that you know tonight that, you, that we we can't get drunk because we both have to be sober because we have to drive back here. Up the car tomorrow. Drive, no, but I don't want to do it. You got to work tomorrow. I don't want to do it tomorrow. She's take, right. Take a cab from your house tomorrow. Take a cab from my house to where? To here. To here? Yeah. Go party tonight and take a cab. I do it twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Forget, trust like, me, it's I, not a hassle. I don't like Joe. Forget it. Forget, Forget it. it. This is an okay. easy solution. We'll figure it out. So listen, we'll just come back tonight and get the car after the party. That's what we're going to do. I'm not involving myself in it. Okay. But you know what? <laughs> what? You want to, if, you're, if, if you want to have a good time, that would be helpful. I'll have a good time. I will have a good time. I will just have a good time without getting three sheets to the wind. You want me to take your car over to your house? 
Can we take the car over to your house? No, I don't want you to take I'm not doing car. anything tonight. No, no thanks. I'd do it for you. I appreciate it. How would you get home? Huh? I had my girlfriend pick me up. Mm. Nah, thank you. I appreciate it. So. Hey, if I you want. Mike, I appreciate it. It's an option. I appreciate Thank you very much. I'm going, I'm going to pick her up. We swing back by here. Take your car out there. Go out, have some nice dinner and rest. And nah, that's fine. fine. I, I appreciate it. Thank you very All right. much. I, I appreciate it. What? You want me to drive the car back? Yeah, would you mind, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Buzz? Yes. What's next? Uh, Death makes a phone call. Oh, she just did. Right. I mean, what's the I, next but, story? Well, that is the next oh, story. Remember, right. if Death calls oh, the cell right. phone, don't answer. All right. All right. Okay, we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. Broadcasting live from downtown Dumbass. The Don and Mike Show. Don't I feel like Captain Dumbass? We've had like limo drivers calling now saying, I'd be glad to take you anyway. We don't That's need nice. a limo. We're driving from Washington to Baltimore. It's a problem with my wife and my son and a taxi cab and... That's all. And we'll have a good talk on the way to Baltimore. Very today. good. I know it'll all work out for my the wife best. and I will have a nice long chat. <laughs> all the way to Baltimore. <laughs> all the way to Baltimore. Yeah, but we have a good time at that party. Uh, I do want to thank Fez, though. Yeah. He said he'd drive my car home tonight. Yeah, thank, thank you, Fez. Too. Thank you, Fez. And I should mention that last night I did go outside and actually speak personally mm -hmm. with Ron and Fez. Oh, good. So I found out that they are real human beings, and I think that they knew that we were real human beings. And they're nice. like us in a way. They keep to themselves, and yeah. we keep to ourselves. I just went out and said, you know, everything cool? Good to they talk. said, cool Modi, and then we did like the Soul Brother handshake. Well, there you and go. And then Fez, I'm not getting offered to kiss me. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not a joke. <laughs> ah! Not a joke. Well, they're, they're, com offer. they're coming on uh, right after us. Yes, yeah. they are. And, uh, boy, a buzz. Yeah. Let's see, four minutes. And See, now the countdown. Is my wife going to be late getting here? You want me to hang out until she gets here? What do you mean? Just hang out and do, do not what I usually do, you know, fly out the door. Oh, downstairs? Yeah. No, no, no. Sure. No, Mike, get off. Enjoy your week. I mean, All right. really, get off. Get, get out of here. <laughs> Have a good time. I'll do that. One of us should. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm speaking for everybody in this room, uh -huh. even those who are not brave enough to speak up on their own. Joe. Hi, Joe. Do you know, it, it's nights like this with, you know, all the incredible pain I've been through. Yeah, and I, yeah. I say something that just sounds sick. It's I say worth it. <laughs> oh. Wow. Man, oh even man. Joe was commenting during the break. Of course. But see, now that the microphone <laughs> is on, he doesn't say anything. He's nervous. And see, none of the comments are about my wife. The comments are just like, hey. Boy, can I relate. Yes, when, yes. Right. You know, we were all, you know what we were doing? We were doing a lot of male commiserating. That's it. right. Yes, we it's were. It's important. Yes, we were. Yeah. Uh, anyway, here's Buzza, a guy who had a lot to say in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Gets up on a soapbox, if you'll pardon the pun, in the mm -hmm. bathroom. Sure. But here he is now, just uh, your humble, yeah. your humble everyday web-slinging news guy. <laughs> Quiet, humble. <laughs> uh, for some time now, people in Nigeria have been afraid to answer their cell phones. And lately, that fear has spread and intensified because as much as they love their cell phones in Nigeria, and they do, they are still a superstitious people. And the big rumor in Nigeria right now is that if you get a call from certain numbers, you will die instantly upon answering. <laughs> the rumor spreads through anonymous text messages to cell phones. Do not pick up that one. <laughs> you will die instantly. Quoting, you will die instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Quoting a 22-year-old college student, I switched off my mobile that's phone. That's not like the guy that used to do the seven up commercials. Yes, that was Jeffrey Holder. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. That's Ooh, how no. far back. This is a cola nut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a college student says, I switched off my mobile phone and took no calls at all. She then alerted her parents and a half dozen friends to do the same. The cell phone company says it's all just a hoax. It that, will die. That, you will die. That none of the killer numbers is real, except one. <laughs> hey, funny. just one. It's a real number. It won't kill you, but it's a real number. Watch out. The rest are fake. Watch out. <laughs> well, it's the end of the road for women in Hong Kong and Syracuse, New York. They have both died in the hands of their lovers during some rough lovemaking. E. But not auto, just erotic asphyxiation. <laughs> 
The lack of oxygen supposedly causes hallucinations that intensify the experience. The Hong Kong man is going to prison for six years after accidentally killing his girlfriend. The man in Syracuse, New York, has pleaded guilty to criminally negligent homicide after wrapping a telephone cord around his wife's neck during lovemaking. He gets five years probation. You know, you talked about it. Isn't it... It's always okay for me, you know? I don't need that extra play. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. No. I mean, come on. No. Yeah. The, ex God. the experience of Just getting the home on. run yeah. is the best yeah. pie that I've experienced a in my life in any you regard. You need to tie a cord around someone's neck. I don't need to have a bag over my my head, my the head on my shoulders, <laughs> you know, and, and, wow. and have my breathing constricted. Really? To somehow be able to enhance the experience. The experience is enhanced. Well, I don't know. There's, uh... Michael Elston is Buster Bates. You know, he's always, of course, always in the, bed, in the bedroom with Martha. With Martha. With Martha. It's always paper or plastic. <laughs> there, there are home runs, and then there's hitting it out of the park. Oh, my. In other sports, Monday Night Football may be leaving the network. It's called home for the last 30 years because of low ratings. They're thinking about moving it to ESPN. And the leaders of major U.S. sports organizations, the NFL, Major League Baseball, have all been advised of the threat of an attack by Al-Qaeda terrorists at big events. No specifics. Of course. Finally, officials in Greece are apparently ignoring the legal violations of an orgy cruise that sails those islands. The London Sun sent a couple of reporters on the cruise undercover. They got 45 minutes worth of video of a drunken orgy that includes graphic scenes, including lesbian and group sex. Mm -hmm. The orgy cruise apparently yeah. gets around the law by taking partygoers out to sea on one boat and then transferring them to another boat. Did you so, say Greece? Yes. Hey, thanks, Don and Mike. A stellar job today, I might <laughs> add. Even, even boat swapping. Mm -hmm. I'm Buzz Burbank on the Don and Mike Show. There you go. Oh, yeah. Fun, fun, fun. We gotta go. Have a great weekend, everybody. Wow. Let's see. Thank you to uh, Tim Crockett. Tim uh, Crockett, the Jeopardy contestant. Guy from Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Lost on uh, Monday to uh, the free Ken Jennings on Jeopardy. Uh, let's see. Monday on the show uh, from Fox's new show, Trading Spouses, one of the mommies. And also Lisa Joyner from KCBS. That's a personal guilty pleasure on my part. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. I'd sure love to see that. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a safe weekend, everybody. I love you, Frida, and I love you, Bart. Stop being so crazy. Uh, good day to you, sir. 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 And, Rob, wherever you are, I want you to know I've got a sack, a sock, a big athletic tube sock full of BBs. There you go. It's going to be a fun weekend. Just to make sure. Good night. Good night. Do things the Robbie way. Absolutely. All right, that's it. Uh, we'll see you Monday. Wipe your feet. Eat a lot. Till we meet again, this is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice. And I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging.